Okay, guys, how you doing? We may have a demonized heretic, a tool of Satan, join us, another anti-Trinitarian. So we'll see if he shows up. Pray for me not to unleash on him and lose my testimony. Another rabid, arrogant dog, a spiritual son of the devil, a dog who thinks he knows the scriptures, who thinks that speaking Hebrew makes him special. So I sent him the link. So hopefully he shows up. So let's see. Let's see if he shows up. Let me just send a message. So pray for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be at peace. So we'll see if this son of the devil shows up. Jordan. No, his name's not Jordan. Hold on. Okay. Joshua Jones. Buddy, I'm going to try to let you in. Get your Bible ready. Hopefully your fake God can help you. Hold on. Lord, the false has been right in. He's saying he's trying to get in. He's a guy, he's at work, he says. Okay, let's see. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, constrain me, control me, make me bold to crush the mouths of these dogs, these blasphemers, and teach them to fear the Lord Jesus Christ and to dry them to the feet of Jesus and take over the session, anoint me to recall scripture, exegete it for the glory of Jesus Christ, not to be politically correct, but not to grieve your heart, Holy Spirit. You take over and crush the mouths of these blasphemers for the glory of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Let's see. Let's see again. Okay, here he goes. All right. Here you go. Hear me? Unfortunately, yes, we can hear you. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So your connection is okay, so you don't make excuses? No. No. Your connection okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm bet it's working good. It's working good. Okay, good. All right. So the people can understand. What do you believe about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, so they know your position? Um, I believe the uh, the Father, Jehovah, God Almighty, whoever is host, the one who is, the one who was, the one who was to come, is the one true right. God. I okay. believe the what is commonly referred to as the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jehovah. They are one. And I believe yes, you, should... you know Hebrew. You don't know Hebrew. So what do you believe about you Jesus? You asked me what I believe, so I'm telling okay, you. Okay, what do you believe about Jesus? And Jesus is the human single natured anointed one of so he is about the human nature of who you're breaking up. Human What's nature that? of who? The human nature of who you're breaking up. Your connection sucks as much as your theology. Human nature of what? He is a single natured human being. Yeah, man, yeah. the anointed one of Jehovah, the about the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. He is the one, he is the prophet, like but greater than most. He is the one declared to be the Son of God, as per Psalm 2. He is the righteous servant. Stop, stop butchering passages. Just tell us what you believe so we can go into the scriptures to bury you. Stop so, misquoting Psalm chapter 2. In so, fact, you alluded to Psalm 2 7, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, can you tell me in the New Testament, when did Jesus fulfill Psalm 2-7? Ultimately, I believe Jesus fulfilled Psalm 2-7 as it declares in Romans 1 at his resurrection. No, I didn't ask you what you believe. That's my answer. You asked me why. Okay, you, no, you're wrong because in Acts 13, okay, 32, 33. Joshua, stop talking over me. I'm going to correct you when you're wrong. Acts 13, 32 okay, to 33. I'm going to muzzle you if you keep barking. Acts 13, 32, 33 says, you're wrong. Go read Acts 13. Open up Acts 13, 32 to 33 to see when that was fulfilled. Open it up. You don't know what you're talking about, but it's okay. I'm going to educate you. Go to Acts 13, 32, 33. So your first mistake. Specifically, I'll read it to you. Yeah, can, can you read, read Acts 13, 32 to 33? I am reading you Acts 13, 32. So he proclaimed the good news to you that the promise was made to the farmers. Yeah, your connection sucks as much as your theology. By, by raising Jesus from the dead, as okay. it is written in the second psalm, you are my son to the father. But okay. he has raised him from the dead. So just as okay, I so said. Now, let's, hold on. So Psalm 2 is fulfilled when he was raised and ascended. But prior to that, he was already the son of God. Now go to Luke 3.22. I, 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 Deny that, Go sir. to Luke 3.22. Please sir, don't. don't I'm going to scripture. Luke 3.22. No, 
Sam, I don't deny what you just said. Luke, you okay, agree? Luke, can you just, I don't care what you know. Can you read Luke 3.22? For the love of God, you love scripture. Luke 3.22. Do you agree with what I said, Sam? Luke 3.22. I will correct your butcher in Psalm 2. I would like you and your listeners. I'm going to give you one more chance. I know you manifest like a dog. Luke 3.22. This is the fifth time I told you. I know you're afraid of scripture. At his birth, Sam, at his birth. Luke 3.22. All right. Yes. Go I back to your vomit like the female dog that you are because you are scared of scripture like your father, the devil. Are you going to read Luke 3, 22? Luke 3, 22. Shut the hell up. Go to hell, you stupid bastard. Get the hell out of here. There you go. Luke 3, 22. So there you go. You see? The guy's so stupid he doesn't know. Go to hell, dude. Valley of Hinnom. Go to hell. Valley of Hinnom. Valley of Hinnom. So there you go. That was quick. So there you go. They can't read scripture, you see? There you go. What a waste of time. So guys, you're all right? Shut the hell up and go to hell, the Valley of Hinnom. In fact, Protestant Believer will purchase your ticket. There you go. That was short and to the point. Another son of the devil, spiritual dog, a blasphemer, spiritual pig, who thinks he knows the Bible. Another arrogant piece of garbage, you see? And you see why I don't waste time with them, right? He's challenging Cameron Bertuzzi to debate the deity of Christ. The guy's too stupid to understand that Psalm 2-7 is speaking of Jesus becoming the messianic, royal, Davidic son of God, but he was already the son of God prior to that because there are different senses in which Jesus is the son of God. But anyway... OJ, hold on. Is OJ barking? Hold on one second. OJ, were you manifesting? Uh, OJ, my personal issues is that when I have to deal with dogs and I have to deal with blasphemers and I have to deal with pig and swine who want to blaspheme Jesus Christ, butcher the scriptures, I take it personally. Now, I know OJ Juice, you may not take it personally because you don't care about Jesus. But if someone insults your mother and calls her a prostitute, then you may... Take it personally. So now, OJ, go get you some orange juice and return to your vomit. But anyway, are you guys ready? Everyone ready? Let's pray and begin. This is what uh, dogs, man. And the guy thinks by speaking Hebrew, he's going to be more righteous and more spiritual, and he's going to get closer to the Lord. So are we ready? Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Elaine, thank you, sister. I wish more people loved it when I manifested. Thank you, Elaine. By the way. The Three Stooges sang a song about you. Oh, Lane, come out, come out, Lane. Guys, how many of you watch The Three Stooges? We're going to pray and we're going to begin. So be praying up. Oh, Lane. Joshua, are you going to answer the question or I'm going to block you again, Joshua? Are you going to answer the question or I'm going to block you because you're ugly as sin? Should I give this guy another chance? Because the guy's manifesting. He has to save face, the narcissism. <laughs> Okay, Joshua, are you going to answer the question? Don't make me bring you up and block you. Okay, let's see. We'll give you another chance. Luke 3, 22. Yes. Read it for me. Ah, so the baptism of Jesus, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Read Luke 3, 22. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, um, and the... Uh, Can you just read the, it, man? Don't give me a copy. Just read it, man. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, you are my That's beloved. That's sin. With you, I'm well pleased. And absolutely, yeah. I agree that Jesus... No, hold on. Was... Well, no, it come to, I don't care. So did he become the Son of God at the resurrection, or is he already the Son of God? Uh, the Son of God has got two meanings. No, actually, it has about three meanings. Let well, me correct okay, you. Yeah, two or three. One at his birth, one at his baptism, one at his resurrection. Oh, so you agree? Yes. At his birth, he's the Son of God. Yep. But okay, I'll just be calm down. At the baptism, Son of God. Amen. And then at the resurrection. So why did you start... Say, I'm going with you. Say, I'm following your rabbit trails. You okay. started by referencing Psalm 2 7. Which I Psalm think is the most. Seven, can I explain yes, this? Right. Psalm 2 7 was referring to his post resurrection ascension to sit as a royal messianic son of God. Amen. I agree. So, why did you appeal to that if you believe he was already the son of God prior to that? See, that's my question for you. Because I think that's the most important fulfillment of that particular title. Okay. So why didn't you tell Please us? Answer. So I'm trying to be patient with you. 
I asked you, what do you believe about Jesus? You went to a passage that talks about his enthronement in heaven, confusing us because we still don't know what you believe about Jesus. So let me ask it again so we can have a fruitful conversation. I'm going to get you out of here. One more time, don't quote to me a text that talks about his heavenly enthronement. Tell us what you believe about the person of Jesus. Did he begin to exist in his conception or is he there before creation? See, that's what I want to know. Well, that's a specific question. So I believe Jesus came into existence at his birth. Okay, see, now that's so now we got got somewhere. But so you don't believe he existed before the <clears throat> enfleshment? No, Sam. What's the proof? Uh, well, I think the most simple is I don't need to use language made up by men to describe the. Jesus. So there you go on a tangent. What's no, no. the proof from Scripture? Stick with Scripture. No, don't the, give me your speech. Scripture does not say that Jesus pre-existed his birth. Yes, it so, is. Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. You're no, lying. Hebrews 1 to Hebrews, not that at all. Hebrews 1, Hebrews 8 1, 8. To 12. Hebrews, see, this is where I'm going to block you. I'm oh. giving you Scripture. You're manifesting. I don't want to hear your lip. Go to Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. I'm the one going to Scripture, and you're giving me your sermons. Save your sermons for your heretical church. Go to Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. Just read it. Yeah. Let's see who's going but, to go to Scripture. But concerning the Son, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated Slowly. Me. So you know what my point is? Slowly, because you're going to attack straw man. So I already know where you're going to go with this. Slowly. Because of this, God, your God, has mm -hmm. anointed you with the oil of joy more than your companions. Keep going. And you, Lord, laid the foundation. I'm speaking to who in verse 10? Okay, Sam, you're never going to persuade me. I'm you. not trying. I don't care about persuading. I'm trying to expose you. So you don't know. I expose heretics like you. Who's you speaking to whom? Heretic. See, you're going on a tangent. I'm going to get you the hell out of here again. Who's speaking to whom in verse 10? This is God speaking. Uh, to who? This is the psalmist speaking of God Almighty. No, no, no. In the context, who's speaking? This is it is the psalmist speaking of God Almighty. One more time. In the context of Hebrews, you can, you, you can block me if you like, Sam, and you let me explain. In the context, I'm not asking about. I'm going to get to the psalmist to bury you. In Hebrews one, yeah. who is addressing these words to whom? In Hebrews one, it's the is quoting the psalmist speaking of third God time. Almighty. Hebrews one. Get that. Can you go to Hell Valley of Hinnom? You could just put the ladder. Go to Valley of Hinnom. See, there you go. See, now he's going to come back again because he manifests. See, was I being nice? Guys, you got to give me credit. Was I being nice? Honestly, was I being rude or being nice? Uh, was was I being patient? How many times did I give him a chance? And who is going to scripture? Uh, big, big smoke. I'm glad you admit you're wrong because we admit you're wrong too and you're a piece of garbage. So get the out of here, Big Smoke. You're a piece of garbage, born of trash. I tried, right? Guys, did I try? Honestly, I tried. I was even respectful. Now, who was giving sermons and preaching? Who was quoting scripture? So there you go. All right. So there you go. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Okay. It was the I, I know the psalmist. In Hebrews, who is speaking to who? Oh, and he got nervous. Oh, you can't persuade me. I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm just trying to expose you. Guys, the guy thinks I'm trying to convince him. I'm trying to expose you that you're a heretic, a son of the devil, and that people need to avoid you like the plague. Anyway, are we ready? Out there, dude. <laughs> My goodness, these guys. <laughs> By the way, I haven't shaved. So I look older. But some say I look more distinguished. And secondly, today's my cheat day. And it's pizza day, guys. Cheat day and pizza day. Yeah, baby. Now pray for me because I try to do it every sixth day. So either I'm going to have to do it Sunday or I may end up doing Saturday. But pray for me for the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit. All right? You're not going to persuade me. I'm not trying to persuade you, dude. I'm trying to expose you, man. <laughs> like Paul said to do. Anyway, are we ready to pray? Are we ready to pray? Guys, let's focus because we got a lot to talk about. By the way, just to let you know why I pushed this an hour later. Yeah, Lepanto. I pushed this an hour later. I was supposed to do it at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I got a notice from my email that my internet bill was up. So I had to rush out to pay my internet. Otherwise, 
we probably have no internet and I'd have to use my neighbor's internet to do the live stream. <laughs> so I had to run around, get to the, the internet provider and pay the internet fee. So that's why I pushed it an hour later because I was supposed to do it at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But let's pray, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Let's begin. Are we ready? In name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Where you guys been? I haven't heard from you in ages. I haven't seen you in ages. I haven't seen any of your shows. May the triune God who lives, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, preserve you, sanctify and provide your daily bread, and I pray that for all of us. But where you guys been? Somali Christian TVX Muslims, go to their YouTube channel, subscribe. Contact me on Skype. And maybe I can bring you on if you want to come on or see you. Because I hope you guys are doing good. We haven't heard from you. By the way, Elaine, don't forget. For those of us who are old, Elaine, those of us who are old and watch the Three Stooges like Protestant Believer, you're famous. The Three Stooges made you famous. Why? Because the Three Stooges sang about you. Oh, Elaine, come on, come on. Oh, Elaine. You guys remember what I'm talking about? Oh, Elaine, come out, come out. Oh, Elaine. You remember that show, guys? How many of you watched it? Come on. You know you love Three Stooges. Me and Protestant Believer, we were raised on Three Stooges, Marx Brothers, right? Laurel and Hardy, Honeymooners, right? Abbott and Costello. These were the comedians. And in the Three Stooges, there's a scene where they're singing to Elaine. Oh, Elaine. Let me see if I can find it. Come out, come out. Oh, Elaine. Oh, oh, hold on. I forgot. I got to do this too. See? Oh, Elaine. Come on. Come on. All right. Let's see. I forgot to do this. Oh, my guys. Come on, Eileen. Oh, I swear what you mean. Eileen. Come on, Eileen. Please, Holy Spirit, come to the forefront. Perfect my recall of every jot, tittle portion of scripture. Save me from error and stammering. Correct me on the spot. Give us the power to take sin and error and overcome sin and error and walk in your power in your life filled with your fruit. Feed us all, my daughters, our loved ones, the holy flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give us all the precious blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, our nourishment, our healing, our wholeness, our protection, our purification, our deliverance. Save us from our flesh, from Satan, to conquer Satan by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, to overcome the world and crucify our flesh. And to be doers of the word, to obey the Lord Jesus Christ and love the Lord Jesus Christ by our deeds. And Holy Spirit, give me the power. Give us the power, miraculous strength for discipline. Strengthen us to be disciplined physically and spiritually. Enable me to die to food addiction, obesity, lust, all of us to die to sin. And empower me to walk in your life and in your power. And I pray that for all of us and teach us how to pray and how to praise and how to worship, how to love and obey our God, the Father, the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and you to obey your word, perfect our sight spiritually and physically, and grant me the health I need. Strengthen my throat, my heart, my arteries, my lungs, my chest with the health and vigor I need. And give me this one to stay fit and healthy and not succumb to laziness or gluttony and use my health not for vanity, but to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and to bless your church. And rebuke Satan and all distractions and give us the greatest gifts. Perfect faith in you, love for you and obeying you and hope in you. For the glory of the Father and of the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Save us from being malicious. Destroy all slander, gossip, backbiting, every form of idolatry and blasphemy to never fall into any scandal, to never shame or betray or disgrace the Lord Jesus Christ. But to love the Lord Jesus Christ with perfect obedience. And I pray I'm not a distraction to my neighbors, but to be the light of Jesus to them. Bless the internet connection, the audiovisual qualities, and beatify us with the beauty of Jesus Christ. We trust in you, Holy Spirit. You are the teacher. Take over. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Now, <clears throat> a lot to discuss. So I'm going to have to bring up my other computer. 
lot to discuss. I'm going to have to bring up my other computer, and I want to share some good stuff with you. All right. Let me share some stuff. I just found another important section from Justin Martyr and his discussion with Trifo the Jew. So let me show it to you. Ready? I'm going to give you the link, and I'm going to read some snippets. So we got a lot to discuss. We're going to kill several birds with one stone by the power of the Holy Spirit as he uses my mouth to bless you and glorify our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's Son and heart. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Holy Spirit. Save the links, learn the arguments, and use them. You're here to learn your faith and live your faith and proclaim your faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray I practice what I preach as well for your glory, Father, for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, for your glory, Holy Spirit. Lo and behold, Justin Martyr, in his dialogue with Chifo the Jew, affirms that Christians are, Christians are true Israel, spiritual Israel. Say what? So, Sam, you're not inventing stuff? No, I'm not. You mean you didn't, you're not making up stuff? No, I'm not. You are not making up stuff? No, I'm not. You mean this is the ancient faith? The faith revealed by the Holy Spirit through the Holy Apostles and their companions, preserved in the Scriptures and trusted to the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. May we know that faith, affirm that faith, walk in that faith, love that faith, and proclaim that faith by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of the Father, the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So here, let me get you the link. Holy land, come up, come out, holy land, come out, ha, 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 ha. Here you go. Here's the link. So I'm going to read it right here. You ready? Here you go, guys. There it is. So let's read it. You ready? I'm going to show it to you. See it right there? And let me show you down the screen. Guys, click on that link. Justin Martyr. Dialogue with Trifo the Jew. All right, here it is. Justin Martyr, chapters 10 to 30. You see it? You guys ready? Watch this, guys. Let me read. Save it, study it, use it against Sabbatarians and against Christian Zionists. Chapter 10. Trifo, Trifo. Let me know if you're ready. Class has begun. Help me to help you. Please stay focused. Ask Holy Spirit to help me to be clear and you perfectly attentive. And do not entertain the trolls for the glory of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. So here we go. Chapter 10, the sub thing. Trifo blames the Christians for this alone. The non-observance of the law. So Trifo the Jew is condemning Christians for not being Torah observant. You catch that? Christian Zionist, Hebrews, Israelites. So let me quote. Justin says, is there any other matter, my friends, in which we are blamed than this, that we live not after the law? So Justin is speaking on behalf of the church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Justin would have been trained and discipled by bishops who are disciples of bishops that were disciples of the apostles. So you have an unbroken chain. Apostles appoint bishops. Bishops have disciples. They appoint bishops, and Justin Martyr would have been discipled by the bishops who were discipled by the bishops who were disciples of the apostles, or he could have actually met some of the direct disciples of the apostles. This is what we have in history, an unbroken chain, apostolic succession. Now, if you Mohammedans manifest, you want to defend your Muhammad, let me know. I'll bring you up so you can help me bury Muhammad, who's already in hell under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so now, what did the church teach, my brothers and sisters in Christ? What did the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, established by the Holy Spirit through the Holy Apostles, teach about observing the law? You ready? Listen. The Jews have a problem with the Christians. He says, is there any other matter, my friends, in which we are blamed than this, that we live not after the law, that you Jews condemn us for not observing the Torah and are not circumcised in the flesh as your forefathers were and do not observe Sabbaths? <whistles> Wait, the church of Jesus Christ established by the apostles, they were not Sabbath 
observers. They were not Sabbatarians. They did not keep the Sabbath like seven-day Adventists. And that's what the Jews condemned these Christians for, right? That we don't observe Sabbaths as you do, right? Are, are our lives and customs also slandered among you? And I ask this, have you also believed concerning us? Have you believed the lies about us? That we eat men? Because the pagans were slandering Christians for being cannibals for eating human flesh. Are you listening, brethren? Listen. The pagans condemn Christians for cannibalism because they thought they were eating human flesh at the Eucharist. Protestants, do you know what that means? Protestant, you know what that means? Holy Spirit, save me from error. Grant me perfect focus and grant all your servants perfect focus. Loosen my tongue. Rebuke Satan. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Fill my daughters and loved ones. And wash us in the blood of our God and save Lord Jesus Christ. To glorify, Father. To glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and glorify you. You know what that means? For the pagans to accuse Christians of cannibalism because they ate human flesh and drank human blood meant the Christians were teaching that the Eucharist becomes the flesh and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't symbolic. Ouch! Do you understand that? The early church was accused of cannibalism because they went around saying, at Eucharist, we were eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Jesus Christ. So the pagans, not understanding what they meant, that they did it sacramentally through the bread and the wine, that they took the flesh of Christ and the blood of, uh, blood of Christ through the bread and the wine, not took his actual body, but the bread and wine became his body and blood for our healing and nourishment by the power of the Holy Spirit. They took that, not understanding what the Christians meant as Christians being cannibals. You don't get pagans condemning you for cannibalism if you take the bread and the wine as symbols that are not the realities which they symbolize. Okay, focus. So, so he's saying to Trifo, do you believe the slander against us that we eat men and that after the feast, after the feast, having extinguished the lights, we engage in promiscuous concubinage, that we are sexually immoral, like the pagans do at their shrines? Or do you condemn us in this alone? Or do you, is this why you condemn us? That we are here, adhere to such tenets and believe in an opinion untrue as you think. Now watch Trifo's response. Guys, watch Trifo's response. Listen to Trifo's response. Please help me to help you. We're going to go into meat. I got a lot to discuss. James White, Muhammad, why? You need to shun him. Trifle responds, the Jew. This is what we are amazed at by those things about which the multitude speak and not, are not worthy of belief. Yeah, that's what we hear about you guys from the pagans, but we know that can't be true. Trifo is saying this. For they are most repugnant to human nature, these practices. Moreover, look what Trifo says. Guys, listen. This is the Jew talking to Justin Martyr. I am aware that your precept, precepts precepts, and the so-called gospel are so wonderful and so great. So I'm aware I've read your New Testament and there's some amazing teachings, mind-blowing commandments. He says it here, that I suspect no one can keep them. See, they're too wonderful, too miraculous that for a human to keep. Trifo saying that. The teachings of Jesus, Sermon on the Mount, too wonderful for anyone to keep. So I know your gospels. I've read them. For I've carefully read them. I've carefully read them. Okay, pay attention to what he's going to say. But this is what we are most at loss about. Here's where we're confused. Yeah, Jesus, wonderful teachings that are out of this world, that are spiritual, that are amazing and humanly impossible for us to attain to. I give you that. But here's where I'm confused about you guys. Look what he says. That you, professing to be pious, right? You, professing to be pious and supposing yourselves better than others, are not in any particular 
separate it from them. Pay attention. And do not alter your mode of living from the nations. And that you observe no festivals. Okay? You Christians don't observe festivals like us Jews. That's one. Pay attention, Sabbatarians. Zionists. Okay? Or Sabbaths. You don't observe Sabbaths, Christians, like we Jews. Hmm, interesting. And do not have the right of circumcision. And further, resting your hopes on a man that was crucified. So you're trusting in a crucified man. You yet expect to obtain some good thing from God while you do not obey his commandments. You catch it? Meaning the Torah. They meant commandments, the Torah. Have you not read that that soul shall be cut off from his people who shall not have been circumcised on the eighth day? And this has been ordained for strangers and for slaves equally. That command was given to Gentiles and slaves who want to worship the God of Israel. So you got to get circumcised. All right. But you despising the covenant rashly. Okay. Reject the consequent duties and attempt to persuade yourselves that you know God. And yet you still claim you know our God. When, however, you perform none of those things which they do who fear God. We fear him. We do the things and you don't do them that you claim you worship our God. If, therefore, you can defend yourself on these points. So he's asking, okay, go ahead. Defend your unwillingness to keep the Torah, Sabbath, festivals, and circumcision. I'm all ears and make it manifest in what you hope for anything whatsoever, even though you do not observe the law. This we would very gladly hear from you and we shall make other similar investigations. So are you getting it, brethren? Because now you're going to watch Justin's response. Don't forget the link. I gave it to you. Don't forget the link. Don't for Shut up, man. We don't want to hear your voice. Here's the link. Read it. It's small. It's a small section. There it is. Now, let me read his response. Are you ready? Chapter 11. Chapter 11, brethren. Are you ready? Are you listening? Oh, Elaine, come out, come out. Oh, Elaine. Chapter 11. The law abrogated. The law abrogated. The New Testament promised and given by God. Here is Justin's response. Click on it. You'll see. Chapter 11. I'm going to read it, and that's it. Learn your ancient faith. Nothing new under the sun. These holy men and women, spirit-filled servants of the Lord, answered all these objections that we are addressing now. They already refuted these arguments. Sabbath observance, Torah observance, modalism, adoptionism, Arianism. Joseph, they destroyed these heresies centuries ago. But history will repeat itself if we don't learn from history. Okay, now let me read his response. Are you ready for his response? Justin Martyr. May the Holy Spirit fill us the way he filled the early church fathers, writers, theologians, and martyrs like Justin Martyr. The way he filled the holy apostles such as Paul and the prophets. Fill us, Holy Spirit, to be part of the, the company of these men and women. Okay, quote, Justin. There will be no other God. O trifle, nor was there from eternity any other existing. We agree with you. There's only one God, and there's no other God, and it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he who made and dispensed, disposed all this universe, there's only one God, the one who created this universe. Nor do we think that there's one God for us and another for you. We're not Martianites. It's only one God. But that he alone is God who led your fathers out from Egypt with a strong hand and a high arm. Nor have we trusted in any other, for there is no other, but in him, in whom you also have trusted, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. But we do not trust through Moses or through the law, for then we would do the same as yourselves. But now, for I have read that there shall be a final law and a covenant, the chiefest of all, which is now incumbent in all men to observe. There is a law, a final one, prophesied in your Old Testament. This is what he's telling him. In your Old Testament, 
God already prepared you and announced a final law. That's not the law of Moses. So what does he quote? Look, remember, they didn't have Bible app. They didn't have Logos. They didn't have Accordance. They didn't have Bible Hub. They didn't have the, the, the books of the Bible between two covers to carry around. Yet they saturated themselves, studying the scrolls, the codices, meditating, memorizing, and recalling the verses from memory by the power of the Holy Spirit without chapters or verses. They put us to shame. So look what he does. So what's this final law? And a covenant, the chiefest of all, which is now incumbent all men to observe, as many are seeking after the inheritance of God. For the law promulgated in Horeb, meaning the law of Moses, is now old and belongs to yourselves alone. But this, this one that I'm talking about is for all universally. Now, law placed against law has abrogated that which is before it. This new law abrogates yours. And a covenant which comes after in like manner has put an end to the previous one. An eternal and final law. An eternal and final law. Namely, Christ has been given to us. And the covenant is trustworthy. After which there shall be no law, no commandment, no ordinance. Have you not read? Look, he's going to quote the Old Testament from memory. May the Holy Spirit fill us with scripture and live out scripture the way he filled these men like Justin Martyr with scripture for the glory of Jesus Christ. And he quotes, have you not read, Anila, this which Isaiah says? Hearken unto me, hearken unto me, my people, and you kings, give ear unto me, for a law shall go forth from me, and my judgment shall be for a light to the nations. My righteousness approaches swiftly, and my salvation shall go forth, and nations shall trust in my arm. And have you not read by Jeremiah? Look what he quotes. Jeremiah 31, verses 31 and 32. Concerning the same new covenant, he thus speaks, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Now look what he says. From memory, quoting the Old Testament, if therefore God proclaimed a new covenant, which was to be instituted, and this for a light of the nations, for all the nations, not just Israel, we see and are persuaded that men approach God, leaving their idols. The pagans are now banning their idols and other unrighteousness through the name of him who was crucified, Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus and their love for Jesus, millions of pagans, abandoning paganism, the gods and goddesses, and immorality, and now worshiping the God of Abraham and living holy lives because of Jesus. Trifle. Because of that crucified man. Trifle. And abide by their confession even unto death. And they're even willing to die for him. Clinging to their confession unto death. Accepting to be martyred than deny him. Same. And maintain piety. Now watch. Moreover, by the works and by the intended miracles, by the miracles that we keep doing. Now, Justin is saying, at his time, the Christians were still doing miracles in the name of Jesus. Miracles that the pagans and Jews were seeing. Miracles that unbelievers were seeing the church performing. Here he says it. I'm not lying. By the works and by the intended miracles, it is possible for all to understand that he is the new law. You, unbelievers, see us do miracles. Even at the time, second century, they were doing miracles, healing people, casting out demons, raising the dead. And it's mentioned in their writings. The power of the Holy Spirit was still operating in these Christians doing miracles. leading to. And by the way, you know what admit this, admits this? You want to be shocked? You want me to shock you? Bart Ehrman wrote a book. Bart Ehrman wrote a book on the spread of Christianity. He was interviewed on the book. Can someone Google Bart Ehrman, his book on the spread of Christianity? I, I have it in my library. I haven't read it. But he was interviewed. You know what he said? He was asked, how did Christianity spread? How did Christianity spread? Guys, you'll find the book. It's on Christianity. Let me see if I can find it. You know how he said it spread? 
He goes, according to the records, the historical records, he's admitting this. Christianity spread because of miracles that people were witnessing. He said that. He said the historical records show, meaning the Christians show, that people were confer converting, leaving paganism because of the miracles of Christians. He admits it. Look for his interview on his book, and he admits it. Now, as a naturalist, materialist, atheist, I wonder how does he account for that? Because he doesn't believe in miracles. Let me get you the book. Let me find it for you. And he was interviewed, interviewed about it. So let me find Bart Ehrman. Here's his books. Let me find it so you can see. So you don't think I'm lying. All right. I have it in my library. I have to find the snippets for you to read it. So here is this section on Amazon, all his books. Yeah. Mark, this is, I'm not lying. Is it called The Triumph of Christianity? Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. How Forbidden Religion Swept the World. Thank you. That's the name of the book. Thank you. In that book, and he was interviewed. I didn't get to read the section, but when he was interviewed about this book, about this book, the man asked him, so you're saying that Christianity spread? And he said, yeah, the record showed that spread because of miracles. Miracles convince pagans to become Christian. Now, how does he account for that? I have no idea. Let me find the name of the book. Here it is. I have it in my library. I will do due diligence to find that section. Here it is. Thank you, brother. There it is. So Justin Martyr, Justin Martyr, Justin Martyr is confirming what Bart Ehrman admits as historical record. You pagans and unbelieving Jews, you're seeing the miracles we're doing in the name of this crucified man. So up until even the second century and even afterwards, even Origen, O-R-I-G-N, G-E-N, mentions. See? Thank you. Thank you, brother. There it goes. And these accounts of Christians' miracles trump the power of the pagan gods. I'm not lying, brother. See? So you got that from the scripture, right, Amir? He admits as historical record that the pagans were converting in the thousands because of the miracles, wonders Christians were doing in the name of Jesus, by the power of Jesus, this crucified man. See it? And that's what Justin Martyr is appealing to. What more do you guys want? Lord Jesus, grant me contentment with the numbers and be humble and destroy my pride. What more evidence do you guys want? God is giving you overwhelming historical, textual, archaeological, scientific, medical, prophetic proofs to show you beyond any reasonable doubt. Christianity is true. The Bible is historically accurate. It is the account of the true God and the historical Jesus. Jesus is Lord. He's alive. And death is not the end of us. I don't know what more God can do for us. What more do you want God to do for us to convince us? All right. So you see what he's appealing to? Now, here's the part you're going to love. Are you ready? Here's the part you're going to love. Are you ready? Here's the part you're going to love. Watch here. Justin, who are the true Israelites? Let's read. Who are the true Israelites? All right. So he says, Moreover, by the works and by the attendant miracles, it is possible for all to understand that he is the new law. The miracles prove he's alive. That man who was killed, he's alive because he's more than a man. And the new covenant and the expectation of those who out of every people wait for the good things of God. Now watch. For the true spiritual Israel and the sons of Judah, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham, who an uncircumcision was approved of and blessed by God on account of his faith, and called the Father many nations, are we who have been led to God through this crucified Christ, as shall be demonstrated while we proceed. Wait, Justin, who is the true Israel? Followers of Jesus Christ. Joy, shut your mouth, Joy Alpha. I know you are upset that your mother is a spiritual whore and a dog, and no one gives a damn about that spiritual prostitute. So you insult us that honor Mary, our mother, our queen, who prays for us, 
May the Lord Jesus Christ crush your mouth, you slandering dog. Get the lot here, you piece of garbage. Don't ever slander the Blessed Mother and accuse us of what you want us to do for your mother. The Shia worship her. We don't. We don't worship your mother. The Shia worship your mother. Piece of garbage. They come in here thinking they're going to slander the Blessed Mother. Now, let me now show you who the true Israelites are, according to Justin. Are you ready? I gave you the link. I gave you a link. See. You ready? Justin, who are the true Israelites? There you go. Here you go. Who are the true Israelites? And then I'm going to read one more section and we begin. Exposing Jam Jamal Muhammad White, this useful idiot of Muslims and demonic tool. Lord Jesus, rebuke Satan. Please, Father. Please, Lord Jesus Christ. Please, Holy Spirit. Guide us. All right, now watch here. You ready? Here you go. Right here. Bam. For the true spiritual Israel and descendants of Judah, okay, Jacob, Isaac, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham, who in uncircumcision, before he circumcised, was approved of and blessed by God on account of his faith and called the father of many nations. So who are the true Israelites? Are we. We are the true Israelites who have been led to God through this crucified Christ, as shall be demonstrated while we proceed. You catch it? So you're telling me the ancient faith, the ancient teaching of the church of Jesus Christ, established by the power of the Spirit through the holy apostles and preserved by the Spirit through these holy men, Always taught the true Israelites are the spiritual Israelites, are Gentiles, ethnic Jews, males, females, young, old, free slave, baptized into Jesus Christ our Lord. They are the true Israelites. This is the ancient teaching. This ancient teaching. So what do we say about Christian Zionism? And are you telling me that the ancient church did not observe Sabbath. The ancient church did not observe the Sabbath assigned to Israel. And were the heretics? Were the false Christians? Were the ones who perverted scripture? We? Well, this is the ancient faith preserved long before the deformation and the deconstructionists of the 19th century. Final paragraph from Justin Martyr. Final one. And then we go into James White. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. The Jews. Okay. I gave you the link. Read it. The Jews. And that's it. And you can read. It's a small section. Read on your own, right? Are you ready? So I can be done with Justin Martyr. Chapter 12. The Jews violate the eternal law and interpret Ill that of Moses. Okay. I also adduce, now this is Justin Martyr recounting his discussion. I also adduce another passage in which Isaiah exclaims, so I quote it, another passage from Isaiah. Hear my words and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Isaiah 55, 1 to 7, he's quoting. Behold, I've given him for a witness to the people. Nations which know not, you shall call on you. Peoples who know not, you shall escape to you. Who, not, who do not know you will escape to you because of your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. He's quoting Isaiah 55, 1 to 7. Now he says, quote, Justin Martyr, the same law you have despised, you Jews have despised the law of Jesus, and his new holy covenant you have slighted, and now you neither receive it nor repent of your evil deeds. Quote, for your ears are closed, your eyes are blinded, and the heart is hardened. Jeremiah has cried. Look at how much Bible they're quoting, how much Bible they knew from memory, from heart. May the Spirit fill us to know the Bible the way they did and obey it. He's quoting it from memory, using the Old Testament against the Jews to prove Jesus the Messiah. Yet not even then do you listen. The lawgiver is present. 
yet you do not see him. To the poor, the gospel is preached. The blind see, yet you do not understand. You have now need of a second circumcision. These are our ancestors, brethren. Though you glory greatly in the flesh, you boast about your physical circumcision. You need the second one, spiritual one. The new law requires that you keep perpetual Sabbath. Oh, my goodness. Wait, wait, wait. Guys, I'm not lying to you. The Lord bears witness. I'm unaware Justin Martyr taught this. I am learning the fathers as I go along. Lord knows I'm not lying. This is the first time I'm reading this. Today, earlier, I was listening. Trent Horney mentioned this segment. So I looked at chapters 10 and 11. I'm now reading 12 entirely. And to my shock, he's using the arguments I used. That the Sabbath we observe is perpetual. It's every day. Here it is. Look what he said. I didn't know that. I promise you. It is a confirmation to me, to us. The Holy Spirit that's filling them is filling us because the Spirit guides us to the same truth and same conclusion. The Spirit does not lead us to contradict each other. And here I'm reading now. I promise you, this is the first time I'm reading this. The new law requires you to keep perpetual Sabbath. I didn't even know that. And you, because you are idle for one day, suppose you are pious. Did you catch that, you Sabbatarian perverts? You think you keep one day, you're, you're pious more than us. Not discerning why this has been commanded you. And if you eat unleavened bread, you say the will of God has been fulfilled. The Lord our God does not take pleasure in such observances. If there's any perjured person or thief among you, let him cease to be so. That's what God wants, that you stop being immoral. If any adulterer, let him repent. Then he has kept the sweet and true Sabbaths of God. If anyone has impure hands, let him wash and be pure. There you go. So you can read it. There you go. That's it for Justin. Now let's get ready for Jimmy White. Jimmy White. Jimmy White. Jimmy, Jimmy White. Yeah. Thomas, metaphysic. Can you get the out of here and shut your mouth and your pie hole? Because if you're too stupid to butcher them in Mark 3.20, then you should not be a Catholic. You should go and become a Buddhist and live in a monastery and never show your face to the world. Get the out of here, dude. You're a disgrace and a joke to Thomas Aquinas. Anyway, you ready? Jimmy White, Jimmy White, he ain't right, he ain't right. Let me tell you why Jamal Muhammad White has become a useful idiot, dangerous to the body of Christ, and... Needs to be exposed, needs to be condemned, needs to be shunned. And glory to the trying God. May the Lord Jesus save us from becoming like him. Save me from becoming like him. And I practice what I preach. Glory to Jesus Christ. Now, even the reformed Calvinists are turning against them in droves. There are now literally hundreds if not thousands of Calvinists, even reformed Baptists, that cannot stand him. That think he's too arrogant and proud and narcissistic too full of himself and are speaking out against him and warning people to shun him. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord shut him down until he repents and protect people from his ministry. For your glory, Lord Jesus, and do not allow me or any of us to end up like him. Let me tell you why this man is disgusting and despicable. A man that I called a friend, a man that I used to respect, but the Lord awoken me like he did to Anthony Rogers, another demonic tool who's now gone silent. Have you now, guys, realized fat boy Dodgers, that coward has now been silent? The coward is not barking anymore? May the Lord silence him and remove him until he repents, and the Lord save us from these false brethren and slanderers and that we don't end up like them. But now, let me first of all tell you and show you that James White and I were buddies. And he praised me. Here, let me give it to you. Here it is. I found it on aomen.org. Let me show it to you on the screen. aomen.org. Okay. Let me just do this. All right. Here you go. Let me show it to you. Here's the link. I'm going to share it with you. The link, the link. La, 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 la. And you're going to see it with your own eyes. The link, the link. La, 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 la. Now click on the link. 
Click right there on that link. Okay. No, the New American Bible is dangerous. Now, let me show you from the horse's mouth what he says about me. Let's see. Do you see it on the screen? Do you see it? The Assyrian Encyclopedia, Sam Shamoon. This is when we were friends, and he had me on his show, even though he did 95% of the talking. Do you see the URL? The Assyrian Encyclopedia, Sam Shamoon, on the dividing line. He invited me, but he did 95% of the talking. So I was wondering, why did you even bring me on? The Assyrian Encyclopedia. Okay. Even in his book, he told me this on page 289 of his book. What, ev what every Christian should know about the Quran. He told me on page 289, he devotes it to me. You'll find the initials. T period, A period, E, the Assyrian Encyclopedia. Okay, you with me there? So I'm not lying. This man looked up to me. He brought me on that show, and he did 95%. All right. Amir, I don't know if you're a Christian, Amir. Why the hell would you say LMFAO? LMFAO, yeah, brother. Are you a Christian, brother? Why, brother? Why, brother, would you say LMFAO? Why would you use that language? Yeah, brother. Stuck for Allah. The Lord Jesus, purge our mouths and our tongues and cleanse us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. You see it? The Assyrian Encyclopedia, Sam Shimon. 95% he's talking. Not me. All right, but now let me tell you why the man is dangerous. I want you to do me a favor. I'm going to go after him because of his recent comments on Islam to show you he's inconsistent. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go on YouTube, put in James White, Aisha. Watch what you're going to find. James White, Aisha. Watch what you're going to find. Here it is. Okay, pay attention because I'm going to play some of the clips. I've done this in the past. We'll do it again. James White and Aisha. You will find Muslims quoting him to silence Christians from using Aisha to bash Muhammad. See it? And you'll find Muslims quoting him bashing Christians like myself, David Wood, Nabil Qureshi. He's their favorite go-to guy. Here it is. First top, when you do James White, Aisha, Christian caller asks, can I use Aisha's marriage age to attack Islam? Who clipped it? Muslim by choice. Right? A son of a Shia by choice. A son of Muta by a Shia's choice. Second one, Sam Shimon attacks James White for saying Muhammad's marriage to Aisha was very common back then. Right? Muslim by choice. Not only that. Again, Muslim by choice. James White acknowledges that Prophet Muhammad's marriage to Aisha was very common back then. Muslim by choice. But then we have this from Christian Prince. Here's another one. James White goes ballistic on Anglican Church for inviting Muslims to read Quran at their service. Now you see the hypocrite? You see the hypocrite? He goes ballistic because they invited a Muslim to recite the Quran at the Anglican Church, but he invited Yasser Qadi to a church and gave him an hour to spew his lies, his Dawah script, and James White swooning, calling him my mentor and praising him. That's okay because he was invited to the mosque the next day. But here's what I love. Christian Prince goes after James White. Marriage Aisha by James White. He went after him viciously. And he's the one who called him Jamal Muhammad White. I got it from him. James Muhammad White. He called him a dirtbag. A lowlife. And Christian Prince is right. All right? So there you go. Now let me play how he's being used by Muslims. Used by Muslims to... 
attack Christians for using Aisha as an example of Muhammad being a pedophile. Here you go. You ready? Let's play it. You can't hear the question, but it's okay. Uh, the main thing that I would strongly recommend you do not start the conversation out is talking about Aisha. Um, if you don't know who Aisha was, Aisha was Muhammad's child bride. Uh, the marriage was contracted at age six and consummated at age nine. All, all of the all of the sources agree on that. There's one possible source in Bukhari that says age 10. Um, but uh, Mahal would be about 54 years of age at that time. See that? And we all go, oh, and there's websites out there you can get. Neither the Quran nor any of the original material, the, the early materials relevant to um, Islam at that time show any embarrassment with that. See that? It was that commonplace. What is... But there is evidence of great embarrassment about it was not Aisha, it was Zainab bin Josh. Uh, Zainab bin Josh was Muhammad's first cousin, whom he had officiated in marrying to his adopted son, Zaid. And then Muhammad married her after Zaid divorced her. And you had to have an entire revelation in the Quran just simply to alleviate the great uh, stress that was there. So, what a disgusting so thing. I, I would say the. The, the, the best way to make sure that all doors are closed, locked, the, the windows shuttered uh, immediately is that I'm saying, I hear your prophet married a little baby. So you're making uh, that's pretty much going to be the end of that immediately. See, what, what, a, what a disgusting uh, pig. I would be rolling down the road uh, outside the cab. Uh, that disgusting point. pig, man. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, 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 not the way to do and it. And these fools, yeah, these zombies, no. laughing. Um, you know, I, 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 attacking Muhammad first. And, and I say this when I, whether I'm talking about Joseph Smith and the Mormons or Muhammad with straw man, um, red herrings. If right? I could never mention either of those guys ever again, rest of my life, I'd be a happy person. The only reason that I have to mention them is if they're standing as a barrier to the presentation of the gospel. And then when you do say something about them, please, 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 please Look make at sure you can back up what you're saying. I mean, put yourself, let me just use one example, then we'll be done. Put yourself in the shoes of a Mormon. All right. Uh, they come to your door, knock, knock, knock. Hi, we're from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I know who you are. You're a part of a cult. Really? Have you ever read the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, Prayer of Christ? No, but I saw a movie about you guys made by ex-members. Uh, Disgusting pig. Yeah. Now, exactly how much credibility are we really expecting them to give us? And yet, uh, that's what we do so often, is, is, well, I heard Joseph Smith did this or anything. If you're going to say that, you got to be able to back it up. Otherwise, don't say it. Otherwise, don't say it. Same thing with Muhammad. Uh, I think it's thing is really important. Yeah. And you see the zombies there. Ha 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 ha. So he admits Muhammad is fifty-four years old. She was nine, but the Quran and the early sources make no mention of this being an embarrassment because it's common. And you shouldn't bring it up. But you can use it from a different angle because I'm playing another clip. And then he demonizes us who do mention it. And he's got these cult followers, these Solowitians, who laugh and get giddy without sitting back and thinking, hold on, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me a 54-year-old man had sex with a 9-year-old minor, but because the Quran doesn't condemn him for it or the Muslim sources don't mention anyone objecting that means that it was common and therefore we shouldn't use that to bash him so this slime has a daughter and he has granddaughters you would think that this man would realize it doesn't matter if it was acceptable he's supposed to be a prophet receiving revelation from an all-knowing god and an all-knowing God knows nine-year-olds are not meant to be violated and mounted, penetrated by 54-year-old men or old enough to be their great-grandfather. You see why this guy's a disgusting pig? See? He, why he's a disgusting pig? Now, he again does his spiel with another zombie follower of his, 
on the dividing line. Now watch here, and this is play two. Just let, let's hear him out. Thank you. Okay, watch, and I won't hold it up. I just want uh, you. To... Let's just take these three, and uh, we'll we'll wrap up okay, with these. Are... And I'm gonna put it. Uh, with, you can uh, hear right. Matthew. Hi, Matthew. There you go. Hi, Matthew. Hi, James. Um, yeah. I have a question about disgusting uh, narcissism and the history of Islam. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. So listen. So, I ran into, uh, I had a discussion with a group of Muslims a couple of weeks ago, and the question of Aisha's age came up. I, I didn't bring it up, but there was a, a man who had come, not with our group, but with someone else. Look, he's even having to be defensive, right? He's having to, I, I didn't bring it up, Jimmy. You know you're my master, you're my pope. I'm a solo Indian. I've been following you. I, I, I just want, I didn't bring up someone, and he wasn't part of our group. Timid, effeminate, sissy. Being afraid of this this narcissist, and he was very bombastic. And very bombastic. That Muhammad was um, with this, you know, essentially child bride. Right. Um, and I didn't, I didn't take that route. But I was, I recently read a book about early Islamic history that seemed to assert that Aisha may have made up with the youngness of her own age um, to try to give her more prestige. You know, to say that she had been with the Prophet longer than either the other wives. So I'm just asking what your opinion is on all that. Well, uh, well, well, uh, the, uh, well, uh, the documentation is pretty strong. Um, the 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 marriage is contracted at six and uh, takes place at nine. Um, uh, was that wildly unusual at that time? No, it wasn't. You see again the justification. It wasn't wildly unusual at that time. Who told you it wasn't? It is Islam that sanctioned, codified men old enough to be a young girl's grandfather to marry and have sex with them. Who told you that at the time or before Muhammad's time or cultures elsewhere, they were okay with premature, prepubescent minors being mounted and deflowered by men three times their age? Where's the documentation for that? In fact, I highly encourage you to watch inspiring philosophies debate with Daniel Hakikachu, and he destroyed and demolished that argument. It became common because of Islam. It became common because of Islam. Because of Muhammad. Do you understand? Look at his face. Does this look like a healthy man? May the Lord Jesus save us from becoming like this man. And he got upset with me. He called me an obsessed apostate. But according to him, his deity predestined me to become an obsessed apostate. Look at his face. Look. Look. Does that look like a healthy man? Go see him now and his rant. And he started again attacking Ergen Kainer. And he has blood in his hands for that incident. But let's finish it. Let's see what he says. Uh, as I've said many, many times, you, you have to... Um, I realize a lot of people, this is their go-to argument. See? Uh, I realize a lot of people, this is their, because we have nothing else to say, nothing better to say. So you see what he does? He demonizes others, ad hominems. He attacks them to discredit them, demonize them. So people look to him as the authority for Islam. So when we mention it, pedophilia, sanctioned, legalized because of Muhammad, at pervert, codifying it. That's our go-to, bread and butter, because we, we're not as intelligent as him, because we can't deal and reach with Muslims like he does. Now, let me be upfront with you. What can you learn from this man that you cannot learn from someone else with greater depth? What can this man offer you? His knowledge of Islam? Poor, surface. You get more on Islam from folks like Al-Fadi, Jay Smith, Hatun Tash, Jay Apologetics, Rob Christian, Christian Prince definitely, Usama Dakdok, David Wood, right? Islam Critique, right? Mm. Avery, God's Logic, Chris Claus, even Apostate Prophet. What can this man offer you? Of what relevance important is he? Trinity, very surface and shallow. Trinity, if you are a beginner, don't know much about the biblical basis of the Trinity? Get his book, Forgotten Trinity. But you will get much more depth, much more meat, much more insight on the Trinity. And I'm not boasting. May God destroy my pride and arrogance on my channel. 
in my sessions and my articles. Much more greater depth on the Trinity than you'll get from this man. You'll get much more depth on the Trinity as articulated throughout church history from William Albrecht on patristic pillars, right? What can this man offer you? The Bible, its authority, preservation, messianic prophecy, he sucks in those areas. When it comes to messianic prophecy, he's terrible. When it comes to the Trinity being established in the Old Testament with the New Testament being a more fuller, complete revelation, terrible. Go see his debate with Zachar Hussein on messianic prophecies. He was an embarrassment. He was an embarrassment. I'm not lying. And go see his debate with Robert Spencer when Michael Brown hosted the debate. It's still online, and he regrets that. Robert Spencer, Michael Brown, when uh, uh, Robert Spencer, James White, went at it, and Michael Brown's channel. It's online. Robert Spencer obliterated James White. Obliterated him. You'll even hear James White, but, 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 uh, but, uh, but, but, uh, but, out of his league. What can this man offer you? Dealing with Joe's witnesses, you'll get much more information, greater depth and clarity on my channel and blog on how to witness to Joe's witnesses concerning Trinity than with him. What relevance is he besides bashing Catholics, bashing Orthodox, preaching his false gospel of tulip that's being obliterated, annihilated all over social media by channels such as Soteriology 101 and others who are leaving Calvinism in droves, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Of what benefit is his ministry? Honestly, tell me, what benefit? Textual criticism? He's a Daniel Wallace wannabe, and even his textual criticism is based on a select type of scholarship that will destroy your faith in the Bible, not strengthen it. I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating. Was that a good roast or a bad roast, Ulka? Because he's one of my mods. So, Ulka, don't cause division. I know he was joking, right? Because he knows I love to hate him and he hates to love me. A good roast, right? Because I know him and David would think a lot of me, and I love them for the sake of Jesus. Of what relevance is this guy, man? Please tell me. The Lord convict him and save him before it's too late. And the Lord save us from being like him. That we don't end up like him or Anthony Rogers. May they repent. May the Lord save me and I practice what I preach and I don't shame Jesus. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. And the Lord save people from their ministries. Their ministries are terrible. Okay, now let's finish this response. See, he will demonize the opposition so everyone looks to him. You understand the strategy? He wants to make himself the authority for these issues. And he knows he's got to talk about Islam because he recently spoke about Islam because now it's center stage. It's 9-11 all over again. Because of 9-11, everyone became an expert in Islam. Now because of what happened in Israel-Palestine, everyone and his mother wants to talk about Islam because that's where you get the numbers and the money. May the Lord Jesus purge our motives. May the Lord Jesus purge my motives. May he destroy the beams of my eyes and not whore myself. Lord Jesus, I beseech you, Lord. Purify us to love you, Lord Jesus, to glorify you, Lord Jesus, and do it for your glory, not for status, position, numbers, or money. But now it is the thing to talk about Islam again. Like 9-11, everyone and his mother became an expert on Islam. Now Israel-Palestine, everyone and his mother is an expert on Islam again. So he had to mention Islam again. Okay? That's why I'm going after him to show his dishonesty and critiquing Islamic fatalism when he's a Christian fatalist, even worse than a Muslim. We'll get there. Let me just finish this clip. Um, yeah. The number one reason why this just is Lisa, take a light, issue please. is the elevation of Muhammad to the point of being the example of human behavior for all people at all times. So notice what he's saying. You should use Muhammad marriage with Aisha in the context, not that it was evil back then, because it was common, but because he's the moral exemplar for Muslims to follow till the end of the age. And therefore, his example has now enshrined pedophilia. And we now know better that pedophilia is evil. But because he's the standard, pedophilia is now something acceptable by Muslims around the world. Do you, you understand his logic? We don't condemn Muhammad for marrying a nine-year-old 
in light of its historical context because that was common no one objected but we can use that as an example to tell muslims he cannot be your moral example in the 21st century because now that is not common it's not acceptable what do you say to this man what do you say to this man what do you say to this man that says, oh, when you say Muhammad was a pedophile or, you know, well, the Quran and the Muslim sources mention no one attacking him for marrying another because it was common. Therefore, in light of his historical context, it wasn't something considered inappropriate and blameworthy. However, when you now enshrine his example so that pedophilia is something acceptable for all times, that's when it's blameworthy. Lord Jesus, have mercy on your church and save people from this man. That's the issue. That results in child brides. That results in in, in the in the bad stuff uh, that comes from this. So you mean for the last 1,200 years before post-enlightenment, it was okay for all those thousands of minors, premature, prepubescent minors, to have grown men mount them and deflor deflower them? and do physiological, psychological damage emotionally, psychologically, and physically. But now, because we know better, now we condemn it, and now it's not appropriate. Is this guy serious? What has changed? So when he did it, it was common. But now, because of his example... We see the problems that in Muslim countries, they're all for child marriages and the prop. But wait, children being married off for the last 1,200 years prior to post-enlightenment thinking, they suffered too. They suffered physiologically. They suffered psychologically. But I was okay because society back then didn't know any better. All right. But that's a separate question from the facts of the of the historical record and historical the, records, the, then the recognition. This is where again the bombastic folks don't care about this. Bombastic, see? I care about I care. being consistent, yeah, consistent. In a, consistently a demon, tool of the devil, and a disgrace to the church of Jesus Christ our Lord. Because if you care, you would care for the children. That were mounted, mounted and violated for the last 400, 1400 years in the name of Muhammad. What if it was your granddaughter and your daughter and your wife? But you're a pig. That's what you are. Applying the same standards to Islam that I apply to my own faith. And so uh, I just, I watched. I. Um, so your faith allowed in the past for godly men who love the Lord Jesus Christ to marry pre-pubescent, premature minors because it was acceptable then and they didn't know any better, even though it's not fixed in the Bible? Can you show me that, Doc or Quack? Can you show me where the church historically from the time of Christ allowed and permitted marriages with pre-pubescent, premature minors? And he knows he can't. He's a liar from the pit of hell. Because I can't even show you from the Didache where pederasty, pederasty is condemned in the Didache. Right? Can your mother do a C? Can your mother do a show on being a whore and a prostitute and how to give birth to bastards like you see? Okay. But anyway, let's continue. I think I bookmarked it. I watched a uh, a video that was put out by and. And it's one of those videos that we haven't gotten good enough to do yet ourselves, but it's where you've got the person talking and then you've got stuff going on around them and graphics and stuff. And it's very, it's very engaging. And it was a interesting attempt to get around the issue of, uh, of Aisha. And it did raise all sorts of questions about how in the early history of the United States, the age of consent was extremely low in certain States. And, and uh, goes through all these people that have these very, very early marriages and blah, 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 blah. And that Watch is inspiring philosophies, in-depth research in the sources, citing scholars, 
in his debate with Daniel Pikachu destroying this claim. Even those societies that would say that a girl is pubescent at 12, you'll find that even in those societies, it wasn't common for 12 year olds to get married. They pushed the age older around 16 and 17. Pubescent doesn't mean you're ready for marriage, right? But there was a recognition that a woman's body had to mature and the assigned age would be sometime after 12. But it still didn't mean that they were ready physiologically and emotionally for marriage. That's why you'll find in these ancients, they would even push it up higher than 12, like 17. Go watch a debate with Inspiring Philosophy. Documentation is there, so I don't know what this guy's talking about. And even 12 is not 9. Islam does not say a girl has to be physiologically, emotionally, right, mature because pubescence, right, means what exactly? That at 12, okay, she's pubescent. Still, you have to take into consideration her emotional, psychological makeup. And when they say that Mary was 12, well, go read Luke for yourself, man. Go read Luke for yourself. Mary is mature enough, old enough to know about sexual intercourse. How do we know? Because in Luke 1, 34 to 35, she says to Gabriel, how can this be? How can I have a son seeing I'm a virgin and have not known man? That sure sounds like a mature young lady who's aware of how children are produced. All right? Okay? How do you then liken that to a nine-year-old playing with dolls and playing with swings with her friends, according to the Hadiths? A nine-year-old. The Hadiths say she was playing with swings and playing with dolls. A nine-year-old. And then on top of that, he's 54. Even if we take that Mary was 12, she wasn't. She would have been older. There are some sources that say she was closer to 16. Joseph wasn't 54 years old, but let's assume Joseph was older. The earliest tradition we have is that Joseph didn't marry her for sexual intercourse. The oldest sources we have, as far back as you can go, anytime Joseph and Mary are mentioned, it is mentioned that Joseph did not marry her to have sex with her. He took her as his wife in order to guard her and her son and protect her reputation. So even if you want to go with Joseph being older, he was functioning as a guardian, not as a husband who had sex with her. Because there are traditions that say Joseph had children from a previous marriage and he was older. Okay, let's go with that. The oldest sources say Joseph did not marry her and consummate the marriage and had sex with her. It says that he married her to be her guardian, to be her protector, so people wouldn't slander her and accuse her of being a single mom who had a child out of wedlock. So he acted as her husband and the father of Christ to shield them and protect them from backlash. Okay? That's if you're going to go with history. And I go with history. Mary is a perpetual virgin. But as a Protestant who rejects history, and you want to go just with sola scriptura, then you cannot demonstrate that Joseph was old. So what I'm trying to say is this. Even if she's 12, even if you have 12, 13-year-olds marrying, 12, 13-year-olds marrying someone who's 17, 18, 19, 20, within that range where the person's not too old, is not equivalent to a 54-year-old Mounting a nine-year-old who's prepubescent, emotionally, physiologically immature, playing with dolls and on swings. Where is the moral analogy? Where's the comparison? But let me let me finish this part. Is why when I deal with Aisha, I'm either I going to deal with you. Aisha in the sense of the elevation of Muhammad to the standard of all behavior, or the contrasting of the fact that the Quran shows no embarrassment whatsoever about Aisha. In fact, as 
you sort of alluded to there, um, Aisha is looked upon as the... By the way, Moveling, no one gives a damn about what you see because you're a blind, illiterate dog, a dumb bastard. You don't even know how to spell moving. You're just as illiterate and a dumb bastard as Muhammad who's burning in hell. You don't even know how to spell moving. So your mother should be thrown in jail for giving birth to an illiterate dog like you. You have great stupidity and you're a great bastard. So shut your mouth, go back to your vomit. The mother of the faithful because she's the only virgin uh, wife of Muhammad. Everybody else had been previously married. Um, and she, she, you know, obviously, according to the stories, Muhammad dies in, in her lap. Uh, she is the source of a huge amount of the Hadith literature. Uh, she's extremely beloved by the Sunni, not so much by the Shiites, um, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. They now watch this issue. Part. You're dealing with a beloved woman amongst the Sunnis who have already heard Listen every this. accusation under the sun. And so it's almost as bad as trying to discuss John 1-1 with Jehovah's Witnesses. You see this guy? Aisha's beloved to the Sunnis. And you're going to hurt their feelings if you mention that she was nine and Muhammad mounted her committing pedoph pedophilia and doing irreparable physiological and emotional psychological damage. And to use Aisha is almost as bad as using John 1-1 one, one against the Jehovah Witness because then they're going to tell you what well, our Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was a God, and the grammar shows it should be a God. So it's almost as bad as that. This is Jim al Muhammad White. But watch here. Look what he's going to say to this guy. Watch. At the front door they, they've heard it all before mm -hmm. you, you want to go a different direction actually get them thinking um and the the aisha direction uh, i find just to be a huge closed door who gives uh, a damn what you feel in a later a later period in time who gives a damn what you think you suck your ministry sucks the lord rebuke you and the lord save us from becoming like you now watch now watch this other zombie this brain dead zombie solo video look what he says i'm and so they do have their answers. They do have their, their apologists. I don't necessarily accept what they're saying, but I likewise recognize that the, the serious discussion of Aisha needs to be focused someplace else than what it, where it normally oh, yeah, is. Yeah. I'm so glad you say that because I'm so glad to the say. Aisha question much more potential, and it, it really closed a lot of doors. Oh, yeah. Now look at this zombie. Look at this idiot. I pray he's not doing ministry or he's repented. This idiot. I'm glad you mentioned that because when we mentioned Aisha, it closed so many doors. You know, some people get hurt to close doors. So then we should not talk about anything that Muhammad did that was evil or question Muhammad being a false prophet because that's going to hurt feelings too. You see how stupid this argument is? So if me talking about Aisha is going to hurt Muslim feelings, I want their feelings to get hurt so they can get rocked and see how evil this is. But if that's the argument, then you should not even question Muhammad's prophethood or the Quran because you're going to hurt people's feelings in closed doors. You see what a demonized, useful idiot this guy is? Oh, thank you for your ministry. I mean, oh, really, yeah, I, uh, especially with Muslim women, like they, I, I did the whole, you know, Muhammad practically rapist thing. It, it completely shut I did the whole Muhammad was a rapist and it completely shut down the door with these Muslim women and you know, there's one woman who still won't talk to me. So ignore the fact that Muhammad raped women and married women who were taken captive. Let's ignore that because it's going to hurt their feelings. So that means there are a lot of people who are neo-Nazis and they love Hitler. Ignore what Hitler did because you don't want to shut the door preaching the gospel to them. Shut her down. She was really heartbroken. I never got a chance to talk to her again. I was... Very, uh, what a feminine queer yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah, well, well, Listen well, to this clip. Look at the Arab narcissist, the hero, the martyr, the martyr's complex. Yeah, Matthew, I've took a lot of heat beat beating for my fan for Aisha. Look. I mean, keep, keep, keep in mind, I have been vociferously attacked. See? Uh, martyr's complex. By Muslims, by Christians for martyr's complex. Narcissist. How we approach that subject and how to approach it. So mainly by people who think it's the very central thing you should be talking about all the time. So yeah, that's, the, that's the way the world See the martyr? Right now. So, now here's what's ironic. You, Look what the Muslim does then. Thank who does you, he bring in? All right, God bless. Bye. Look what he brings well, in right afterwards. Wow, what a combination. Right after mentioning James White, he brings in Anna Kasparian with chunky yogurt. 
Cenk so Uger of TYT, the Young Turks, as, uh, where she mentions that in some places you can get married to girls who are young. What an amazing combination. Strange bedfellows, huh? And what they found was that girls as young as 12 years old married off here in the United States. 12 years old. You see? See that? What an ironic combination. Anna Kasparian, a traitor to her people, working with Chunky Yogur, Chenk Yogur, talking about that in America there were girls as young as 12 who would be married off with J Jamal Muhammad White. Strange bedfellows indeed. All right, now let's go to his discussion of Islam Strange because, again, shut up, man. We don't want to hear you. He did because, again, it's now the hottest thing. It's the latest thing to talk about Islam. Why? It's the latest thing, the hottest thing to talk about Islam. Why? Because of Israel and Palestine. Just like 9-11, the whole world, everyone and his mother became an expert in Islam. Now everyone is talking about Islam. Everyone's an expert on Islam. Everyone has to say something about Islam. Why? More viewers, more support, more money. So this trash can, Jamal Muhammad White, had to chime in about Israel and Palestine. But I want to show you his dishonesty because he says Islam is fatalistic, and yet this dude, Jamal Muhammad White, is a fatalist. He's a Calvinist who believes the same thing. But he just names the God differently. So let's deal with his dishonesty. Disgusting. I said, no, I got to expose this guy. I prefer not to deal with him, but I can't help it. There are times in which he does things. He needs to be called out like he did to others. The same measure he used is now being used against him. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to his session on Islam. Let's go there. Right? Yeah, chunky yogurt. And I'm going to play certain clips, and I'm going to show you his dishonesty. I'm going to show you what this man believes as a Calvinist. His beliefs are no different from Sunni Islam. The only exception is he claims to be a Trinitarian, which makes him more dangerous. All right? Makes him more dangerous. So let me find, was it this one? Let's talk about it. Yep, this is the one. Here it is. Let's do this here. Let me just go there. I don't want to give you the link. You don't need to see it. But anyway, let's jump to the relevant parts. Let me find it for you. We begin. All righty then. Yeah. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. So let's see. Where do we begin? Where do we go, my lovely? Where do we go? Okay. 36 minute, 39 second mark. 36 minute, 39 second mark. Now watch. I'm going to now expose. Now the links to the Arcs of Rebotos are in the description box. We're going to play a few more clips to tell you he's more dangerous than a Mohammedan because he claims to be a Christian. All right. Watch here. Let's begin. You ready? We'll begin a couple of seconds earlier. And even in these universally accepted hadith, that just force Islam into a constantly regressive perspective. One of those, I remember specifically being addressed in that book. I'd have to look up the title. I don't remember the title of the book. It's, it's in my Kindle collection. I can track it down. Um, but Listen to this. This is a Calvinist. One of the okay? hadith was the Mutawatr, universally accepted hadith, uh, that Muhammad said that there are those who do the works of, of the people of heaven, Jannah, Jannah, yeah. their entire lives, until what is written of them Listen. takes them, Listen. and they go into the hellfire. So he's talking about Kader Takdir, Kader Takdir. Guys, let's go into a little Islam. In Sunni Islam, you must believe in predestination, the good and the bad. In Islam, you have six articles of faith called Iman. Please, brethren, class has begun. I need you to listen. Oh, glory to Jesus Christ. I just saw a show by Gary Habermas where he was talking about medically documented near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, proving there's life after death, and how they saw an orb, a light, and it manifested as uh, spiritual entities. So orbs are, <clears throat> at times... Spiritual entities, demonic or angelic. So he just said he saw another orb. May the Lord Jesus constantly confirm to us 
that we are in his presence. We belong to him in spite of our sins, that he's filling us with the spirit and sanctifying us. And he's pleased to use us and that we love the Lord Jesus Christ and walk worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's listen. Let's focus, please. Not all orbs are demonic. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. What am I mad about? It's okay, man. Now, just pay attention. Don't worry about the orbs right now. Okay, now, pay attention. All right? I need you to listen and stay focused. Okay. There are... In Islam, what's called Iman and Islam. Iman and Islam. Iman is the word for faith. And, okay. And then Islam, those are the pillars. What you must do. Iman are articles of faith. Articles of faith. Okay. Iman, articles of faith. Pay attention, brethren. May the Holy Spirit give me perfect recall. Of every jot, tittle, portion of scripture and empower us to obey the scriptures, to prove we love the Lord Jesus Christ and recall all the facts and save me from error. And then there's Islam. Islam. Iman, faith, belief, articles of faith, and Islam. In Sunni Islam, there are six articles of Iman. This is what he's trying to talk about, okay? He's going to talk about this now. Let's focus. Lord, bless this session. Make it fruitful for your glory, not for my praise. And strengthen your church. And use me as a holy vessel, glorifying you. Strengthen us, Lord. Well, Shia, Luna, Shia have their articles of faith and their pillars that are similar, but they are different as well. We deal with the majority sect of Muslims. About 85% of Muslims claim to be Sunnis, though most of them are not practicing. So this is why we focus on them, because they are the majority. Just like among Christians, I don't know if you know this, the majority of Christians are Catholic. Catholics have the largest numbers, largest numbers of members, more than any other Christian denomination. That's just the fact, statistically. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong, okay? Don't take my word for it. Check Google, the greatest scholar ever lived. Go and look at Christian denominations. Which denomination has the most members? It's the Catholic Church, right? It's Catholic Church, yep. Of the Muslim groups, which group has the most Muslims professing to be part of that group? Sunni Muslims. Sunni Muslims. Okay? But just like most Catholics don't know about Catholicism, most Sunnis don't know about Sunni Islam. I know that, Ortho Christos. Get off your horse, dude. Why you get so upset? Hey, so what? That doesn't mean anything. Get off the horse. Oh, they're Nelly. I'm just telling you statistically. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. What am I mad about? Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. What am I mad about? So the largest sect of Islam is Sunni Islam. That doesn't mean they're right. And most Sunni Muslims don't know Sunni Islam. All right. Now, Iman. Let's go down through what they believe. Okay, let's go down the list of their beliefs. Six articles of faith, Iman. Number one, you must believe there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Are you guys listening? Are you learning or am I wasting your time? May the lumber, numbers increase for the glory of Jesus Christ and that you're blessed. Because I'm going to have to do a part two on James White. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. I know Ortho Christos. Yeah, rah. Hey, get it, son. Get it, son. Get it, son. Greek, Ere, come on, Malaka. It's the truth. All right, anyway, I pray I'm not a nuisance to my neighbors. Okay, number one. Iman, I M A N. What Sunni Muslims are to believe. Here are their beliefs. Okay. You must believe in Tawheed. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. That's article number one. Now, guys, listen to what they believe. Number two, you must believe in a spirit world. Consisting of angels and genies. That's right. Angels and genies. You must believe in the invisible realm. Angels and genies. Now, you want me to go a little deep in their beliefs? Because we'll do a part two. I promise you. If you this is blessing you and you're learning, and Lord willing, this session I'm going to do a talk on, is Melchizedek Jesus? Because I keep getting tired of being asked that question. Hey, uh, Melchizedek, is that Jesus in the Old Testament? 
I think it's Jesus. What do you think, Brother Tim? All right, anyway. In Islam, they'll tell you that angels are created to obey. They don't have free will. They only serve Allah. Whereas genies can obey or disobey because they have free will. And genies, they're males and females. And they procreate. They cohabit. They have sex. And they die like humans, but they live much longer than humans. And they can change their shape. They are shapeshifters. This is what Islam teaches about genies. The word is jinn or jan. G, I'm sorry, J-I-N-N, J-A-N-N. -N. But in English, it's genies. Have you ever wondered why when you used to see the show, I Dream of Genie, Barbara Eden dr dressed in Arabic garb or Aladdin's lamp, they're all dressed as Arabs because genies, that concept comes out of the Arabian folklore and mythology. Do you know that? Have you ever wondered why a genie looks Arab? A genie looks Arab, right? Like I dream of genie. Man, if genies look like her. Oh, oh, oh. So in Islam, Genies are males and females. They die too, but they live much longer than humans. They are shape shifters. They can change their shape and they remain invisible to humans, but they can appear to you as a snake. They can appear to you as human. And there are stories in which genies slept with humans and got them pregnant. In fact, if you don't remember, not too long ago, I played a clip. I played a clip. I can't find it. Lord willing, in part two, I'll bring it to you. Where supposedly, recently, in the last hundred years, less than hundred years, a genie went to a Muslim school in Saudi Arabia. I played the clip. A genie appeared as a human in order to take lessons from a renowned Salafi scholar in Saudi Arabia. They didn't know he was a genie. But what gave it away? The students at night were arguing who was going to turn out the light. So he got angry. He goes, you know what? I'll do it. And he stretched out his hand like plastic man. I played the clip about six months ago in one of my sessions. But you remember that, right? And I'll find it, Lord willing, this week. It says he stretched out his hand like plastic man and turned out the light. And the people freaked out and ran out of the room. They knew he was a genie. So the Muslim scholar called the student into the room. And he said, I've been told you're a genie. He admit, yes, I am. Why are you here? He goes, because I wanted to learn aqidah. I wanted to learn Islamic theology. He goes, I'm sorry, but genies are not allowed to attend Islamic school, and he had to throw them out. It's supposed to be a true story. I'm not lying. A true story. Now, do genies exist? No. Demons exist. Satan exists. So Satan and demons will appear as Zeus, will appear as Hermes, will appear as Diana, will appear as Baal, will appear as Shiva, will appear as Krishna, will appear as a genie, will appear as an alien. They don't care. Demons and Satan will appear any way you want as long as they can deceive you from knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. So de genies are demons. They are not genies. They are demons. Satan appearing to you if you're a Hindu, they'll appear as Shiva, Krishna. If you're a Greek pagan, they'll appear as Zeus, Diana, Hermes. If you're a Canaanite, they'll appear as Baal, right? As Mot, right? As Asherah, as Il. And if you're to aliens, they'll appear as aliens. So I do believe... People have seen genies, not that they were genies, that they were demons appearing as genies, but in their, in their teaching. Genies are good and bad. My daughter again. Okay, mama, hold on. Let me see. I love my angels. In Jesus' name, I'll order for you. Pray God bless Baba to stay healthy. Provide for me to do ministry. You stay healthy and you're with me every day and I raise you up. In Jesus' name, I'll order it for you. I'm just doing a live stream now. And next week is Zippy's birthday. 
So let me know if you're going to come. Any, okay, anyway. Now, coming back to the issue. You, you, you with me? Genies are male and female, according to Islam. They die, but they live longer than humans. There are good genies and bad genies, and they can procreate. So they have sex and families, and they can have sex with humans. According to Islam, Satan is a genie. Chapter 18, verse 50, Satan is a genie, and he has offspring. And Allah warns Muslims from Iblis, who's a genie, and his offspring. That's chapter 18, verse 50 of the Quran. So you got to believe this. So you got to believe that. That's the second article of faith. Third article of faith, you must believe Allah sent messengers and prophets, apostles and prophets. Apostles and prophets are not the same category. Islamic theology teaches all apostles are prophets, but a prophet is not necessarily an apostle. In other words, if you're a prophet, that doesn't make you an apostle. But if you're an apostle, you're also a prophet. An apostle is both a messenger and a prophet, whereas a prophet is only a prophet. That's what they teach. And in Islam, the five greatest apostles and prophets, because to be an apostle and to be a prophet, the five greatest in Islam, notice who they are. Pay attention. Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Four out of the five are biblical characters. So in Islam, if you are a Rasul, the word messenger, apostle, you're also a prophet, a Nabi. But you can be a prophet without being a messenger. Now let me explain to you how they've explained it. The Quran doesn't explain it, right? But I'll explain to you how they explain it. They'll tell you a prophet obviously receives commands from God and he'll exhort people to follow the legislation that Allah has given through another messenger. A messenger is a prophet in that he receives commands from God, but he's also more than a prophet in that he also is given scripture to pass on to his community, and a messenger can abrogate the commands given previously. So a prophet does not abrogate commands given by a messenger, nor does he pass on a scripture, but a messenger, an apostle, can abrogate previous commands and is given scripture to pass on to others. Okay, you with me there? Focus, everyone. You understand the difference now between a messenger and a prophet? So if I'm a prophet, that means I receive commands from God, Allah, and I exhort you to follow the legislation of Allah. An apostle, messenger, Rasul, he receives commands from God, Allah, so he's a prophet. But he does something prophets can't do. He can cancel out previous commands. And he's given scripture to enjoin on communities. Okay? We got that? So you got to believe this. That's the third article of faith. There are traditions that say Allah sent around 124,000 prophets. Some would say 125,000. I've even heard 224,000. But the typical number you'll hear is Allah sent 124,000 prophets. Among them, Allah raised 313 to 314 messengers. Let me see if I can find the hadith online. Okay. So it varies. 313, 314 messengers. How many prophets? About 124,000. Among those prophets, how many of them were messengers? 313, 314. Let me find you the hadith. If I can find it. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, sorry. All right. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on, 300. Let's see. One second, guys. I should add this before. But again, I try to ad lib. I don't, you know, I don't usually have notes unless I have to. Let's see, brethren. One second. All right. I'm trying to fix it. 
where I can do the exact number, see if it pops up. Sorry, guys. Just give me a second. Yep, I'm going to have to do the number. I'm going to have to spell it out. 314. Then let's see. Okay, if not, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about it in part two. But just bear with me. All right, let's see. Yep. Yeah, I don't think I'll find it right now, but let's see. 100. Yeah, I won't find it. Okay, sorry, guys. I won't find it. Let's see if I put in 13. I'm trying, man. I should have had this already. It's on sunnah.com. Sunnah.com. I found it, but I don't have it on me. All right. Anyway, it is what it is. Let's do this one more time. I'm going to go to my mail and see if I can find it. I may have it in my mail. Nope, don't have it. Sucks being me. Where is the room, my lovely? Where will you go? I want to know. La, 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 but this comes from Ishech. There is a hadith. But here you go. Let me show you here. I had saved it in my email. But this comes from Ishech, an online site where the Muslims answer questions. All right. Sam, he's the man. Levy. Levy, I don't know, dude. With the long hair, you keep looking like a girl, dude. You're scaring the hell out of me, sir. All right. Here you go. Ishech. Let me just show it to you so you don't think I'm making up. But I'll find the hadith itself from sunnah.com. So here you go, guys. Noel, 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 you smell. <laughs> no, that's not right. Sorry about that. Noel is a uh, king of Israel. Sorry, man. I'm, I'm stupid, man. I'm, I'm like you know, a jackass. All right. Noel, 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 Noel. Here you go. Here it is right here. Okay. 124,000 NBA. Here it is. 124,000 NBA. Okay. You see it? And 313 messengers. Question. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I have been hearing from here and there that the number of the prophets, save the link, that's sent by Allah, 124,000. So is the number of the walis, or is this the number of the walis? Is there any proof from the Quran or Sunnah supporting this fact? So here. As-salami alikum. Alikum salami. Finger licking good. All right. Imam Suyuti in his Al-Hawi stated that Al-Hakim reported that Abu Dhar asked the Prophet, Salad dressing be upon him. How many prophets and messengers there were? And the response was respectfully, 124,313. Another narration, say 315. See, I'm not making that up, okay? As far as the number of the walis, the friends of Allah, as the same number of the prophets, this can be deduced from when the prophet gave indications and made reference of what quality certain sahaba had in relation to former prophets. Like Sayyidina Umar to Musa and another Sahabi to Dawood, the numbers of Sahaba were 124,000 during the farewell sermon. Ibn Arabi explained that every wali takes from a certain prophet except for the Qutub who takes directly from the messenger. Salad dressing be upon him. <laughs> so did you hear what they're supposed to believe? Do you see what they're supposed to believe? Islam, Sunni, articles of faith, 124,000 prophets, among whom 313, 314, or 315 messengers. Okay, everyone got it? We got that? All right. So that was the third article of faith. Fourth article of faith. You listening? Lord, bless the numbers for your glory, not for my praise. 
Fourth article of faith. Fourth article of faith. You must believe Allah sent down scriptures, books, books. Some are mentioned in the Quran. The scrolls of Ibrahim and Musa. The Torah. The Zabur, the Psalms, Zabur. And the Gospel and Quran. Right? Al-Quran, Al-Kareem. Fifth article of faith. You must believe in the last day. You must believe in the last day. Day of resurrection, day of judgment, Jannah, paradise, or hell. And the sixth article of faith, which is what James White is going to talk about. I'm setting you up for this. Sixth article of faith. Sixth article of faith. The sixth. Man, I have a hard time with that with my list. You must believe in divine predestination. There are six articles, six of which is, you must believe in Qadr, Takdir, the good and bad. Allah has preordained, predetermined everything that takes place, and you must believe that if you are a Sunni Muslim. And this is what Ma Jamal Muhammad White is going to talk about. Now, do you want me to break down Islam, the pillars? Islam, the pillars? Of Islam, all right, a general overview real quick. The things you must do, these are things you believe. But a true Muslim must do, not just believe. Okay. Now, Iman, what you believe, those are the six. Islam is what you do, the pillars, your duties, responsibilities. They too are roughly six. Let's go through them. The first thing you must do is Shahada, Kalima. You must confess and testify there is no God but Allah and confess and testify Muhammad is his messenger. That's the first pillar, Islam. Second pillar, you must perform prayers, the daily prayers. Salah, as salat. Okay, that's your second pillar and duty, right? Third duty, fasting, psalm. You must fast. That's the month of Ramadan, okay? That's the third pillar, okay? Fourth pillar, you must give alms. You must give charity, zakat, sadaqa. Generally, you give 2.5% of your excess income, 140th. But there are other areas, other <clears throat> issues involved in which zakat is required. Like if you have... A land and you have agriculture, it gets complex. Zakat, sadaqa, almsgiving. Fifth article, I'm sorry, <clears throat> fifth pillar. <clears throat> Are you listening, guys? I need you to listen, not be distracted. Because if you're distracted, I'm going to get you out of here. Fifth pillar, you must perform pilgrimage once in your lifetime, if you can afford it, to Mecca to perform the rites of pilgrimage called Hajj. But there is the greater pilgrimage and the lesser pilgrimage. The greater pil pilgrimage is called Hajj. The lesser one, Hajj. The lesser one's called Umrah. Lesser pilgrimage, Umrah. Greater one, Hajj. That's when once in your lifetime, if you can afford it, you go and perform the rites in Mecca, like running around the Kaaba seven times, running between, between the two hills, Safa and Marwa seven times, throwing seven stones at Wadi Mina, right? You'll be in a state of Ihram. Ritual purity, wearing a white, you know, garment. Then you shave your head, etc. Okay. But then there's the sixth pillar. Sixth pillar. Jihad, fi sabil Allah. Doing jihad in the way of Allah. That's Islam. Pillars. And I gave you Iman. Everyone got it? You understand what they are? So now, Jamal Muhammad White is going to mention the hadith. Multiply attested hadith narrated by multiple companions of Muhammad who narrated to multiple followers of theirs. So it's multiply attested that Allah has predetermined everything and watch his dishonesty. So let's now begin. Everyone got it? You enjoyed this? This 15 minute excursus. I hope this is blessing you, strengthening you, challenging you, and you're enjoying it. And I'm not wasting your time. And may the Holy Spirit come to the forefront and He be the teacher. And save me from error for the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit. So now you understand, right? All right, so there you go. 
Now he's going to talk about Kader, predestination, takdir. And here's where I'm going to expose his lies. And I'm going to have to do a part two, Lord willing. Here's where I'm going to expose his lies. Okay. Do good works their entire life of this stuff that was gathered 250, 300 years after Muhammad. Um, Look how sick we'll never be able to see Islam make progress. So obviously these are only people who live in the West. <laughs> they wouldn't, wouldn't last long in Afghanistan, Pakistan, um, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. You know, they live in London, places like that. Or the United States, that matter. Because they recognize that there are things that are said, even in these universally accepted hadith. Listen. That just force Islam into a constantly regressive perspective. One of those, I remember specifically being addressed in that book. I'd have to look up the title. I don't remember the title of the book. It's uh, Phil Talk. Well, I'm starting to like your mother because I heard she repented from doing muta in Iran with the Shia after she gave birth to you because she realized the damage of doing muta because of the bastards that she's producing. So I hope you're happy now, Phil. Now return to your vomit, you piece of garbage. Hope that made your day. <laughs> that was predestined by Allah, by the way. Allah predestined me and insult you. It's in my Kindle collection. I can track it down. Um, but one of the hadith was the mutal water, universally accepted. Trying to sound intelligent. Uh, that Muhammad said that there are those who do the works of the people of heaven, Jenna. Their entire lives. Until what is written of them See, overtakes predestination. them. Listen to study. And they go into the hellfire. So there are people who do good works their entire lives, but that doesn't matter. It's what is written of them. It is the decree. Uh, See? Kader. That is... Dishonesty. Wicked so dishonesty. Perspective, whether you're going to heaven or hell wicked, dishonest, demonized tool. He's attacking Islamic predestination. God, it doesn't matter. It's what's written. If Allah wrote that I go to hell, all my life I can be a Muslim, but then my fate will overtake me and I'll turn from Islam and do the deeds of the denizens, denizens of hell. Or I can be an evildoer, but then fate overtakes me, what is written for me, and I turn to Islam and do the deeds that merit Jannah. And this guy's a Calvinist. And he's criticizing Islamic predestination. You see why I say the guy's wicked? But watch, watch, I'm going to turn it against him. Determined for you 40 days after you're conceived. That's just that's all there is to it. Nothing you can do about it. It's fatalistic. You can't do nothing about it fatalistic. Coming from a guy who's a Calvinist. I used to be a Calvinist. And I was a five-point Calvinist like him. And this comes from a guy who's a Calvinist, and he's attacking Islamic fatalism and saying there's nothing you can do about it. Is this guy truly not demonized and blinded and the Lord is handing him over to shame him and make him look stupid? A Calvinist is critiquing Islamic predestination? But it's going to get worse. Watch what he says. So you do... Good works your entire life until what is written for you overcomes you. Go to hellfire. Go to hellfire. And then it says, there are those who do the deeds of hellfire their entire life until what's written for them overcomes them and they go to paradise. So, unlike Christianity, unlike Christianity, God's election is intended to the audacity of this guy create a holy people who are conformed to the image of Christ, here it's like, yeah, you, you can live your entire life doing right things and go end up in hellfire and there ain't nothing you can do about it and you really can't know one way or the other. Okay, uh, let's stop right there. That's why jihad is so yeah. attractive to people because the only, the only promise you have in the Quran is that if you die in a state of jihad, you get your ticket punched. Paradise. That's the only way to know for certain. And I've used that illustration many, 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 many times um, to explain what happened to Glasgow Airport, for example. I'm going to refute them um, now in a minute. Let's just see. To national health system physicians 
were the ones that drove a vehicle filled with gasoline into the doorway of the airport and set it on fire. They thought it was going to explode and douse everybody and burn everybody. And the only people that died were them. They died slowly and agonizingly. Um, but the point is, the promise to them was, this is how you know you will go to paradise. Only way to know, because they don't have a mediator. That's another lie. Lord willing, in part two, I'm going to destroy this lie. I want you to hear this lie and how he contradicts himself. Islam has no mediator. Now, this guy claims to be an authority on Islam. He wrote a book on Islam. Christians, if you follow this man, he's going to confuse you. You're going to be inconsistent. You're going to contradict yourself, and you're going to be dishonest. Stay away from this man. In Jesus' name, the Lord protect people from his teaching. The guy's bad, and he's so arrogant he doesn't see it. The Lord save me from becoming like this. Pray for me if you love me that we don't be like this. May he repent before it's too late. They don't have a mediator. And he's going to contradict himself later. Lord willing, in part two, I'm going to show that to you. I promise you. We're going to do part two, Lord willing, maybe tomorrow or the next day. And I'm going to show you how in the same stream he contradicts himself. And he's wrong. Islam does have a mediator. And later on he's going to mention it, but he's so blind in his arrogance he doesn't see it. Islam has a mediator. It's Muhammad. The guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But now listen. They don't have an atonement. They don't have atonement. So these are important. These are important. Things. Okay. So now let's now deal with this. Okay. Let's now deal with this. Yeah. I'm doing to James White what he does to others. Let's now deal with this. Islam is fatalistic. But in, in Christianity, God wants to transform a people to conform the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see how dishonest he is? Because he's a Calvinist. Let me remind you of what high Calvinists, hyper-Calvinists like James White believe. I know because I was a Calvinist. This is what Anthony Rogers believes. Brethren, listen to me, and I'm going to quote the horse's mouth. As a Calvinist, James White believes that God has already foreordained from before creation in his eternal counsels, those who will create to save and those who create to reprobate and destroy. So James White will tell you that a person who ends up leaving the faith and apostatizing like me who was a Calvinist. It's because I was foreordained to be a vessel of wrath so that God would end up destroying, destroying me as an example for vessels of mercy in order to to be glorified in my destruction. In other words, James White is no better, in fact, more dangerous than a Sunni Muslim because he believes the same thing. He can believe, like me, because he calls me now an obsessed apostate. According to William Albrecht, he was talking to me about me. I'm an obsessed apostate. I was preordained from before eternity to end up abandoning Calvinism and opposing Calvinism in order that God would destroy me in his anger as a vessel of wrath to demonstrate to the vessels of mercy, his mercy towards those whom he elected for salvation and his wrath against those who he has reprobated in order to glorify himself. That means all this time I thought I was of the elect chosen of God, but then God's decree overtook me. And I fell away from being a Calvinist. Now, can you explain to me what's the difference between his belief and what he just attacked Islam for? Sunni Islam? What's the difference? And I'm going to quote him. I need you to support Leighton Flowers, Soteriology 101. He is a thorn and a nightmare in Calvinist side like James White. He too was a former Calvinist who's now destroying Calvinism biblically, exegetically, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's so influential. Lord is using him mightily. Can you tell me what the difference is? Between what he believes, and he knows he believes this, right? Why didn't he mention it? Because he's dishonest. You know he's not ignorant. You know he knows what he believes. You know that he knows Sunni Islam is similar to his belief. Why didn't he mention it? Now, to let you hear from the horse's mouth, what does James White believe? And then we're going to have to do part two. Lord willing, part two, I'm going to show you he's an ignoramus. He's either too stupid and ignorant to be taught Islam or he's inconsistent and a liar because he'll tell you there are no mediators in Islam. But then he contradicts himself and mentions the Hadith, posits Muhammad as a mediator. So either he's ignorant 
and not reliable or he's lying in order to make himself look good and Islam look bad. You, Islam doesn't need you to lie to make it look bad. It's evil as it is. In fact, Sunni predestination is just as evil as Calvinistic predeterminism. And yet the Calvinist is more dangerous because we as Christians know that Muslims don't worship our God. But Calvinists claim to worship the Trinity and follow the Bible. So they become more dangerous because we accept them within our camp. Right? We're more less likely to accept Muslims and more likely to reject their God because they're Muslims. But we are more likely to accept Trinitarians who believe the same thing about predestination because they claim to worship the triune God of Scripture. So who becomes more dangerous? A James White or a Shabir Ali? Okay? Let's be honest. Who said five points of Calvinism should be acceptable within the pale of orthodoxy? Who said that? Who said it's okay for you to claim to worship and love the triune God and hold to the five points of Calvinism? Who said that? Protestants. By what authority? Their own authority. Okay? You think the early church would have allowed James White and Anthony Rogers in fellowship with them? And I'll get into that in part two, Lord willing, because we're already, we already are over the two-hour mark. So we're going to do a part two, Lord willing, either tomorrow or the day after. And we're going to learn a lot. I promise you, you're going to learn a lot as I expose this man using the same measure against him that he uses against other Christians. May the Lord use me as a scourge on him, and the Lord save me from becoming like him. And the Lord Jesus have mercy and pity on us. Okay, now, let me show you what he believes about predestination from the horse's mouth. From the horse's mouth. Let me show you the link uh, here. Let me get you the link. Okay, hold on. Save these clips. Upload them before they disappear. From the horse's mouth, and I'm going to play a clip from Leighton Flowers. But let me share the link, okay? Here's the link, and I'm going to show it to you on the screen. When asked in a debate, and when I heard this debate, I used to be a five-point Calvinist, and I wanted James White to win. Thank the Lord Jesus he brought me out of Calvinism, which he believes was predestined for me. So here you go. Save the link. And after we hear this, we're going to have to wrap up because I have to get going. I hope you still were blessed. I hope you enjoy this. You learn, you laugh, you are convicted, and you're troubled by the power of the Holy Spirit. May he be the teacher and we be his mouthpiece. So here it is. Here's the link. Shut up, man. Shut your face, mister. There's the link. Okay. Now let's play. You ready? Let's play. Shut your face. You ready? Listen, the horse's mouth. Let me answer that with a question. Let me ask you this question, and this will put it into perspective to show the difference. When a child is raped, is God responsible, and did he decree that rape? If he didn't, then that rape is a, a, a an element of meaningless evil that has no purpose. What I'm trying to point out by going to Scripture... So what is Scripture, your answer there? Because I, I want to understand the answer. I'm, to I'm trying to go to Scripture to answer. The, yes, but the what reason, is the answer to the question that he just asked the, so is, that we can understand what the answer is? I, I, I mentioned to him... Yes, because if not, then it's meaningless, and purposeless, and though God knew it was going to happen, he created without a purpose. That, that means God brought the evil into existence, knowing it was going to exist, but for no purpose, no redemption, nothing positive, nothing good. So he did I decree say, it, and if he decreed it, then there's then meaning he, to it. It has meaning, it has purpose, Got it. suffering, all suffering has purpose. Everything in this world has purpose. There is no basis for despair. But if we believe that God created, knowing all this was going to happen, but with no decree, he just created, and all this evil's out there, and there's no purpose, then every rape, every situation like that is nothing but purposeless evil, and God is responsible for the creation of despair. And I, I, that I, is not, not, as, I've that been is not what I believe. For years, I've been trying to figure out why it is that in order for rape to exist, um, or unless God caused it to happen, there can't be any purpose in it. God can use evil, and he does. But to blame God, which is what a decree does, to blame God for the rape of a child is a horrible um, attack on the very character and the about, love of God. Okay, did you hear it? Okay. So why did this guy not mention that as a Calvinist, his belief is no different from Sunni Islam? You heard James White. Now I'm going to play Leighton Flowers. I'm going to give you another link. Save these links. Upload them before they disappear.
Okay, I'm going to give you another link. Why did this man not mention, as a Calvinist, he believes everything is predestined, the rape, child molestation, pedophilia, Israel bombing Palestine, Hamas kidnapping Israelis, predestined by God. The God, he says, is the triune God of Scripture. Why didn't he mention that? Me apostatizing, predestined. Why didn't he mention that? How different is his belief from Sunni Islam, which he called fatalistic? Is this guy demonized? Is he really that blind? Is he really that dishonest? Now, here's the other one I want you to save. Okay? This is the other one I want you to save. Okay? And we're going to play it from Leighton Flowers, where he condemns James White for making fun of him for accurately representing what James White believes. Here it is, okay? Save this link, brethren. Save that link. And I'm going to start telling you where I'm going to play from. I can't play all of it, okay? But James White is whining about late power saying, well, hey, it was decreed for me to follow, follow away. Well, Leighton, that's all you can say? We'll say, and Jelaine's like, well, hold on. That's what you believe. Why are you upset? Why are you upset that I'm actually representing your belief? So we're going to start listening from, let me tell you what minute. Three minute, 37 second mark. Three minute, 37 second mark. And then we'll we'll come back, Lord willing, tomorrow for part two. I just wanted to prepare you for all this. Three minute, 37 second mark. Listen, Calvinists admitting that God has predetermined everything, even our apostasy. God predestined all Calvinists who leave Calvinism to abandon Calvinism. God predestined all the rape, child molestation, and murder that anyone does, whether Israel or Palestine or Boko Haram, for his greater glory. Why doesn't this demon tell you that? Why doesn't he tell you that? Okay, now let's listen. Are you ready? Because we're going to go out with a bang. Save the links, brethren. Save the links. So here we go. Let's start playing. the well you know i've been determined to not understand so he's these making things. fun of his own position but he's just trying to be funny no that is how he thinks that is it's not that's not how i think it's what you believe and, and, and prove me wrong dr white prove me wrong come on the program and say i do not believe that Leighton was determined to believe what he believes exactly i would just say that yeah, say because it. otherwise you're not mocking me you're mocking the true claim of your system exactly now lest you just think that i'm misrepresenting calvinist remember james white touted the book by listen here Bing Young, the french philosopher he touted his book as a defense of determinism right you've heard him on his program you've seen it all over social media this french philosopher Bing Young, being touted as one of the leading scholars in defense of this concept of theistic determinism and and let's just uh, instead of Believing me, listen, listen to what one of their leading scholars says with regard to what Leighton has been determined to believe and think. Okay, okay. now he's going to quote a leading Calvinist philosopher and apologist. Okay, I wonder what his name was. Okay, and anyway, he used to be an atheist. He became a five-point Calvinist, wrote a book praised by Calvinists like James White. Watch what he's going to admit. This is now one of the leading Calvinist philosophers and apologists. His book, Praised by James White and Other Calvinists. Watch what he's going to say. Yep. David Wood interviewed his testimony. Former atheist who becomes a dire Calvinist. Ironic. Didn't believe in God. Now he believes in a God that predestined all evil, even atheism. Ironic. How far extreme the other side he went. Listen. Did God predetermine everything? Big known, big known. Did he predetermine I'd leave Calvinism? Did he predetermine Leighton Flowers to leave Calvinism? Did he predetermine everything we do? This is a Calvinist represents James White's view, whom James White's <clears throat> DL mentioned him in his book and praised it. Listen. Okay, listen. Exhaustively really describe reality. So determinism isn't the thesis that some things are determined. 
it's the view that all things are determined. And we'll get, we'll get back to that because that matters in some of the formulation of the arguments. Listen. Okay, well, this, this raises a question then. So did God causally determine Calvinists like Kolkel, Crit, Muller, etc., to disagree with you? <laughs> uh, the answer is yes. Yes. Uh, TV, because your whore mother likes guys that wear Calvinist shirts, and I was predestined to wear this Calvin Klein shirt because Calvin was in Klein, and the whore that gave birth to you loves men in Calvin t-shirts, so I want that whore to love me, so maybe I can influence her to repent and stop being a whore, so that she doesn't have intimacy with Shiat, so that she doesn't give birth to bastards like you, TV, because you're a bastard, and you're a piece of garbage, and it was predestined for you to be that way. Don't let me bring my cat to urinate on you. Anyway, let's go. All things are determined, so yeah. Was I was okay, so the Calvinists that disagree with theistic determinism, in other words, there are some Calvinists who believe in libertarian free will, like Crisp and others, inconsistently, but they do. Um, they, they deny theistic determinism, and they disagree with the higher Calvinists who do believe in theistic determinism, and he asked them, did God determine them to do that? Listen. And he says, yes, that's exactly what happened. Listen. All right. Tell me that. Uh, <laughs> Okay, and it also raises another question. Uh, Leighton, you and 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 uh, yeah. I both used to be Calvinists. They say, right? Listen, to this. Uh, they claim to be Calvinists. Back yeah, back, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. And I again, I can take that as their word. I didn't know them. I don't have any reason to doubt that they were sincere Calvinists in the past. But yes, to answer that question again, he's asking. Well, that raises a big question of conundrum somehow for the Calvinists. Uh, you know, did Listen. God determine us to leave Calvinism? And yes, yes, I take them at their word. I say yes, God determined that. Yes, uh, determinism means all is determined. Uh, so, just get this out of the way. Uh, determinism means that everything is determined. You hear that? that makes no sense to ask, "Will God determine that?" Yes. 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 Did you hear that? The answer is yes. Did you hear it? Five point Calvinist, former atheist turned Calvinist, wrote a book that James White, other Calvinists praise. Yes. Yes. God determined everything. Yes, he de predetermined Sam Shamoon, Leighton Flowers, leave Calvinism. Yes, let's get that out of the way. Yes, he predetermined everything. Yes, in case you missed it one more time. And they're laughing about it. <laughs> they think it's a joke. <laughs> so God predestined my ex-wife to commit adultery, to destroy my marriage. God predestined the judge to leave me homeless. God predestined that I would not have my kids. God predestined her to marry a man and make him an adulterer. God predestined that I would leave Calvinism. God predestined that the Palestinians would be bombed and their children killed. He, It's not he allows it, which is difficult in of itself to explain why. Saying God allows the evil and trying to explain why is one thing. Saying, no, he determined you're going to do the evil. He predestined you're going to do the evil. So you're going to do evil that you can't avoid doing because it's predestined. That's a whole nother ball game altogether. So let's listen. This was what I believed as a Calvinist. Can you believe it? Here. One more time so you can hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's fine. And I, again, I can take that as their word. I didn't know them. I don't have any reason to doubt that they were sincere Calvinists in the past. But yes, to answer that question, again, he's asking, well, that raises a big question of conundrum somehow for the Calvinists. Uh, you know, did God determine us to leave Calvinism? And yes, uh, I take them at their word. I say, yes, God determined that too. Uh, determinism means all is determined. Uh, so just get this out of the way. Uh, determinism means that everything is determined. Well, it makes no sense to ask, well, did God determine that? Yes. 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 They're laughing. Yes. The, answer, the answer is yes. Uh, okay, so and not from me. That's from the leading scholar of the Calvinistic, yep. uh, of Calvinistic system. God is determined for latent flowers to leave determinism and to believe what I believe. So exactly. he's laughing at and mocking what he himself believes and his leading scholars teach and believe. The namesake for their own systematic, even believes. Yep, thing. John Calvin. Um, let me pull He's going to quote John Calvin. We got five more minutes in this clip. You guys okay? Glory to Jesus. Numbers are good. May they increase for his glory. Five more minutes. You're going to hear John Calvin, their master. So why is James White upset? Why is he manifesting like a demon that Leighton Flowers is saying, well, hold on, Jimmy. 
you believe God predestined me to leave Calvinism and attack it. And I'm the pot. I can't talk back to the potter. Isn't Leighton Flowers right? What are you upset with? And then when James White, too much of a coward to mention me by name, says an obsessed apostate, because I'm doing to you what you've done to others and made the Lord Jesus save me from becoming like you, but treat you the way you treat others. Same measure. But you believe God predestined me for this. Isn't that ironic? You believe God predestined me for this. So we got five more minutes of this and we'll be done. And then Lord willing, I promise you a lot more meat in part two. But I may do that the other day because I may do is Jesus Melchizedek. And there's a lot of other topics I have to revisit and finish. Pull it up on the screen. If, Listen, uh, what did Calvin teach? Do this real quick. I, John I Calvin. Have you seen these things? It's, there's nothing new here under the sun from what we've done. But I, I just have to point these things out because new people are tuning in every time we have a program, especially when we're answering someone like James White. Creatures are so governed, according to John Calvin, by the secret counsel of God that nothing happens but what he has knowingly and willingly decreed. In other Listen. words, God decreed Leighton's view against determinism, period. That's just a truism of their view. He's mocking it. He's mocking me saying something that's true about his system. Just keep that in mind. John Calvin, quote, we hold that God is the disposer and ruler of all things, that from the remotest eternity, according to his own wisdom, he decreed what he was to do and now by his power execute what he decreed. Hence, we maintain that by his providence, not heaven and earth and inanimate creatures only, but also the counsels and wills of men are so governed as to See? move exactly in the course which he has destined. In other words, he has destined the will of men. You hear that? The will to do good or to do evil. John Calvin. Less to rate, to do all those things. That is in accordance with his divine will. Thieves, murderers, rapists, molesters. That's John whatever. Calvin he's quoting. According to John Calvin, quote, other evildoers are instruments of divine providence being employed by the Lord himself to execute judgments, which he is resolved to inflict. Now, again, maybe, uh, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe this is not the James White kind of Calvinism. Listen, I was going to catch James maybe White. James White has softened John Calvin's Calvinism or Mignon, maybe he's overstating his case. Maybe, maybe God doesn't really decree and determine for molesters to molest or rapists to rape on James White's form of Calvinism. Well, let's see. When a child. Okay. Now, the links to these are in the description box. Upload them to your channel before they're wiped. They're, they're gone. I'm going to let him play the clip I played earlier, earlier. See what he's doing? He's burying Jamal Muhammad White, showing he's dishonest, inconsistent, a slanderer, a bearer of false witness, and a liar. Why? James White is whining. You, Leighton, all you say is God predestined everything. That's all you believe. Yeah, because that's what you believe. So when I then hold you accountable to your own system and demand that you be consistent with the logical conclusion of your system, you get upset at me. And he quoted James, uh, he quoted John Calvin accurately from the Institutes. John Calvin admitting God has predestined the choices we make in such a way that we're making them in accord with God's decree because God decreed we do these evils, rape, murder, because he wants us to do them in order to fulfill his will. And now he's saying, well, maybe James White doesn't hold to John Calvin's view of predestination or Beyond's view, even though he praised them in his book. But then he buries him because he plays the clip I played. But wait, James White, you believe exactly like John Calvin and Guillaume Bignon. Everything has been determined. Rape, murder, incest, pedophilia. Everything has pre been predetermined so that when we sin, we're only doing what was decreed for us and we could not choose otherwise. You believe that too, Jamal Muhammad White. Here, and he's going to play him. Lane Flowers is a nightmare, James White. James White cannot stand him. And so James White has been begging him to debate on John 6, 44. And Lord willing, they're debating. In March, in, da in Texas, I think it's in Houston. They have a debate on John 6, 44, whether it proves Calvinism. Pray for your brother Layton to demolish this tool of the devil. May the Lord expose him. Is raped. 
Is God responsible, and did he decree that rape? If he didn't, then that rape is a, 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 an element it, 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 of it meaningless did. evil that has no purpose. What it I'm did, trying to point out by going so to Scripture. So what is your answer there? Because I, I, I want to understand the answer. I'm, to I'm trying to go to Scripture to answer. The, yes, the but reason, what is the answer to the question that he just asked the, so is that we can understand what the answer I, is? I, I mentioned to him, yes, because if not, then it's meaningless and purposeless. And though God knew it was going to happen, he created without a purpose. And that I'm, means God brought the evil into existence. No, it was going to exist, but for no purpose, no redemption, nothing positive, nothing good. So he did I decree say, it, and if he decreed it, then there's then a meaning he, to it. It has meaning. It has purpose. Got it. Suffering, all suffering has purpose. Everything in this world has purpose. There is no basis for despair. But if we believe that God That's created her, your mother is all slick. this was going to happen. She licks the boots of the no shield that molested her. He just created and you're a dog and a bastard like no purpose then every rape every situation like that is nothing but purposeless evil and god is responsible for the creation of despair and I, 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 that I is know. not not as i've been not what I for years i've been trying to figure out why it is that in order for rape to exist um two more minutes or unless god caused it to happen there can't be any purpose in it god can use evil and he does but to blame god which is what a decree does to blame god for the rape of a child is a horrible um attack on the very character and the love about? of god okay. okay so you heard it for yourself heard it yep james white and calvinism qual calvinism according to the namesake and the leading proponents believe god determines all desires of evil all moral evil all Are you hearing it? That is the claim of their system, period. So when somebody asks me, Leighton, why did you determine this? And I say, if Calvinism is true, the reason I determine this is because God determined for me to, and you laugh at it, you laugh at it yeah. and you mock it, Yeah. then what are you mocking except the claim of your own system? Exactly. You're, you're ultimately calling determinism a joke. Yep. That's what you're doing. Whether you recognize you're doing it or not, you're mocking your own view this is why i often say sometimes some arguments don't need to be refuted they just need to be clearly stated exactly because intuitively we know they're funny yeah. we know they're they're jokes they're evil they're silly they're untenable they're that's the reason i keep stating them i keep stating what what you find to be so detestable and so weird and oh my goodness that's so good ah. why do i state it because it's the claim of your system and it's revealing it how and asinine it is and whenever I state it and you laugh at it, instead of doing what Bignon did, which is, oh, yeah, that's true. Let's just move past that now because, it, yeah, that's true. Why, why, yeah. why don't all Calvinists just respond the way Bignon did? Exactly. Be honest say, like him. Yes, man. it's true. You rejected Calvinism and yeah. you started the podcast because God determined for you to. Exactly. Okay. Why don't you build then, You know why James White can't be honest like Bignon, however you pronounce his name, and just admit what Bignon admitted? Because it was predestined for him. <laughs> you get it, guys? Why can't you, Jamal Muhammad White, just admit it? Like Big Known, whom you praise, and his book you praise and endorse, and John Calvin, why can't you admit it? Oh, because it's predestined for Jamal Muhammad White not to admit it. It's predestined for Jamal Muhammad White to get upset and deny it. <laughs> oh, the irony. <laughs> oh, the irony. Okay, 15 more seconds, and then we're done here. We can talk about why you think God might do that. And you can also talk about why you think I'm still blameworthy for my actions in doing this when God determined for me to do it. And we can talk about that, and I think that would be a reasonable discussion then versus what I think we see uh, James White doing here, mocking his own system. Okay, there you go. That's true, though. There you go. We're done. Brethren, that was part one. I promise you there's going to be a lot more meat by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ if the Lord's Spirit is pleased to use me in part two. I'm going to show you James White should stop talking about Islam. He's a joke because he's wrong when he says Islam has no mediator. But prepare yourself for part two because in the description box, I give you the links to these video clips and the articles and rebuttals we will be studying from. You have my permission. Take my materials. Upload them. Clip them, translate them, but please seek the Holy Spirit to help you understand what you saw, heard, and read. Share them accurately. Do not misrepresent, misinterpret. May the Lord save us from error. And then 
spread them wide and far so that thousands more through your efforts will hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and why these systems are perverted and from the pit of hell. Share them with your family members to protect your children. May the Lord protect all our children, my daughters. They know the truth and follow Jesus Christ so they don't make the mistakes I made to get to their destiny longer than necessary. They get there faster than I did because the Lord took me through a process of trial and error. May you learn from my mistakes. May the Lord correct my mistakes, not to repeat them and speak the truth and walk in the truth and expose these Bible perverts and false teachers. Share them with your churches, your neighbors for the glory of Christ. Now, pray for me. Prayer warriors, pray for me. Pray the Lord Jesus bring my daughters to me sooner than later that I raise them in the love of Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord to give me the discipline I need to stay healthy. Intense physical training. Intense <clears throat> discipline on how I eat to keep the weight off and not be vain about it and use my health to glorify the Lord. That the Lord will grant my daughters and I miraculous protection, safety, security, and health. And if Lord tarries, they grow up to be godly women and I die in their hands. But the Lord bring them to me now. Save them from this marriage. Remove Martin in Jesus' name, Lord, please, sooner than later. Give me the patience and endure. And that I walk worthy of Jesus and never fall into scandal and become the thing James White has become. May the Lord not give me over and have mercy on me. And I pray he preserves you. And pray for the support. PayPal Patreon, stay steady to use it for the glory of Jesus Christ. Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will return. He's alive. He's alive in his glorified physical body of flesh that he took from the Holy Virgin. May the Blessed Mother pray for us with the holy angels and the holy prophets and holy apostles. May the Lord Jesus wash us, my daughters, our loved ones, in his blood and seal us. Seal my daughters, our loved ones, by his Holy Spirit to love you, Lord Jesus Christ, and give me discipline, Lord, to stay healthy and holy and serve you in holiness and provide for us. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. Father, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. Return, Lord. We await your coming. We love you, Lord Jesus. We trust in you. Save us from our flesh, from the world, and from Satan. Bring my daughters to me in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Maranatha. Lord willing, see you soon.